Stardew Valley is a game that I've been meaning to play through for a while now. And it's finally time. We're gonna do the first full year, 112 days in Stardew Valley. This is gonna be my first full playthrough. Lewis, you sly dog. So make sure to bring some popcorn and your pitchforks, but please just save them for the comments. If this video does well, we will do year two in this world, but let's get started. All right, so this is a brand new game and it's basically the story of how I ended up doing YouTube, uh, kind of. I set myself up managing YouTube farm with my favorite thing being subscribers. Thank you for 500K, by the way. I really hope I hit that before we release this video. And then my grandfather, who might also be Santa, sent me a letter saving me from working for Amazon, and I head off to Stardew Valley. Meeting me at the bus was Robin, who took me to a place where, whew, the adpocalypse had hit hard. I woke up the next morning and started the game in earnest after tweaking settings so that this is actually at a size that's reviewable for you all. I picked up the initial parsnip seeds and then headed out, clearing a little small space in front of my homestead and using the hoe to just make a small little area where I could plant the seeds safely. From there, I watered them and that took a quarter of my energy man, I am weak at the beginning here, before heading into town. I know one of the first objectives is to talk to everybody, so I just started running around and clicking on anybody who was there, getting introduced to all of the different citizens of Stardew Valley. From there, I went to go meet Pierre, who I picked up a bunch more parsnip seeds from. I want to try to earn a little bit early money so we can move faster here. From there, I continued my welcome tour. Oh, I can meet somebody new. Hello, person. You seem awfully calm having just exited your bedroom and there's a stranger just sitting in your house. But with people being very calm with me just breaking and entering, I said hello to basically every NPC that I can at this very early part of the game. There's undoubtedly a few that I missed, but we'll have to get there later. I made my way back towards the farm from the southern entrance, clearing a path so that I'd be able to access everything, planting and watering the parsnip seeds to double up on my very first crop. The next morning, I checked the weather and luck reports and things were both looking positive. It was going to rain tomorrow, so I wouldn't have to worry about watering tomorrow, but I definitely still do today. I received the initial letters for both the backpack upgrade and to go meet Willy while dropping off a few of the forageables that I had found for some early cash infusion. I headed south and grabbed the cutscene, which allowed me to grab the old rod, and this is feeling more and more like Pokemon by the day, heading over to Pierre and realizing that the 24 slot backpack would be 2,000 gold. That's gonna take me a few days to earn my way towards, so I just continued searching around, finding different NPCs, my man Linus up here just chilling by the water, and everybody was exercising in one of the rooms at the store, so that allowed me to just check a few other names off of my list. From there, I did a little bit of fishing, struggling quite a bit with this minigame. It is honestly pretty tough. But I rounded out the night just collecting wood around my farm, allowing me to craft up a chest and drop a whole bunch of stuff down here, considering my inventory space is extremely limited this early in the game. And with a quick forging level up, we're off to day three, where I stepped outside and had a crow immediately start messing with my things. I'm gonna have to build something for that. I spent some time clearing back all of the fallen weeds and rocks, to be able to get everything, getting a geode from one of the stones. That's definitely gonna come in handy. I took some of the wood to craft up some wooden fences and torches so that my base would look a little bit better. Just doing general work around the farm itself, actually. I planted a few trees that I'd be able to harvest later for wood or turn into sap or something else later, getting a quest that would send me down into the mines for some copper ores. I actually went over to Clint quick and had him crack open the first loot box of the game. And yes, geodes are loot boxes and I will not be elaborating further, ending the day with a little bit of fishing, a little bit of tree chopping, and then a quick nap. Hey, this video isn't sponsored or anything like that, but if you wanna support me in making cool content here on the channel and to get access to all sorts of behind the scenes things, go check out my Patreon. We're doing a big push for the end of the year with a whole bunch of cool new rewards and announcements coming very soon. 
So make sure you go check it out, patreon.com slash Lagundo. The next morning, I quickly took care of the crops and then continued chopping trees back to be able to get more workable space in the base. Opening up another loot box and getting dirt, so it's just like any other loot box ever. I went and I talked to Henry and actually had a separate conversation with Willie. The cutscene apparently didn't count for that, meaning I completed my first initial quest and I got a little bit of gold for it. My next quest sent me off to harvest a parsnip, so I headed back to the farm, collecting any forageables that I had found along the way, running until I saw a cave and an abandoned greenhouse. Now, I know that this is something that I can unlock way further down the line if I complete some big stuff at the community center, so I'm gonna try to keep that in mind. But after another hard day's work, I'm going to sleep at 7.40 in the evening? This is, this is very much not like YouTube work, actually. The next day, there were some beautiful cherry blossoms falling, a letter from a giant mega corporation in my mailbox, but thankfully, the parsnips were in. That allowed me to complete my first quest and receive another for building a coop. We will deal with that a little bit later. And I went over to Pierre's shop to sell my first harvest. Oh, God. instant, instantly upsold. Instantly upsold. With the immediate disrespect to my ever-growing inventory, I headed up north towards the mines and triggered a cutscene that is a very clear homage to an earlier game. With a new quest to explore the mines, this is pretty much the combat challenge of Stardew Valley. The idea is that you can break all of these rocks and they will either have the ores that you need or ladders which will allow you to descend even further, with stronger and stronger mobs attacking you as you continue to head down. It's also where you get basically all of the metals that you can unlock, so we're definitely gonna spend a decent bit of time in here. As I was progressing down to level five, which is the very first checkpoint that you can unlock with the elevator that you have here, I'm collecting things like quartz and different metals and ores, fighting the mobs because you do need to kill them for different supplies, which could greatly come in handy. Once the first checkpoint was unlocked, the quest book set me to get to level 40, which is gonna take a lot more work and a bit more preparation than just walking in here with a rusty old sword and a dream. But after level five, and as I get down to six, seven, potentially making more progress, I'm picking up any copper that I see. This will allow me to upgrade my tools and build better things. Copper is an essential and very important full game building material. The quartz that I'm finding though are also extremely valuable, especially for me this early on. But as we got to the point that my energy was basically zero, and if I had swung another pickaxe, I would be exhausted the following day, I headed up out of the mines and then back down into town, stopping by Clint's store to try to turn in the copper quest, but he wasn't there. I went over to the bar where almost every NPC comes to later in the evening, didn't find them, but stopped Clint on his way over there to be able to turn in my first quest and earn a nice little chunk of change. With all of that done though, I didn't have time for socializing. I'm here for the grind. So I ran my way back to my farm, dropped everything back into my chest and took a quick nap. Day six, I started the day being visited by Clint. So you already know it was a bad day, but he handed me the recipe for a furnace, which I guess would be useful. And Robin reminded me that I could build wells, but I'm not gonna need those because we're going hard on the tech route for sprinklers. I grabbed a quick quest to pick up some sunfish and then did a little bit of fishing in the rain, not realizing that you can't catch sunfish when it's not sunny. So that's a bit of a bummer. I picked up some additional seeds from Pierre, grabbing potato seeds and throwing them all down, knowing that I would get multiple per harvest. And since it was raining, I didn't have anything to worry about there. From there, I crafted up a furnace and smelted up some copper into copper bars, which was the main crafting material that I'll be using to upgrade my tools and build other things. But with that, I crafted a scarecrow, planting that down so that those stupid birds will never interact with my food again. From there, I ran my way over towards the mine, starting at level five this time with the elevator checkpoint and continuing to delve deeper. I'm trying to pin the slimes up against the wall and then mine up any copper that I find so that I'd be able to make more bars and potentially upgrade my stuff as well. I had a bit of a scary encounter on level nine and without any food to heal myself, I just kited the mobs around before hitting the ladder, diving down to pick up my first item at level 10, a pair of leather boots. And once I had that, I headed over towards the Adventurer's Guild for my first encounter with them. And you could say that expectations were a little high. Oh my, what? <laughs> I have to kill a thousand slimes? 
Okay. Gil's disrespect aside, I headed back to my farm and called it there for the night, making sure to not, you know, die. The following morning, I watered all of my crops before heading back into town, popping into Gunther's museum, getting the intro cutscene there, and then turning in a few of the different gemstones that I had been holding, knowing that this was a core mechanic of the game. After exiting that, I did pick up the community center intro cutscene where Lewis was showing me around a very dilapidated kind of building, and I vaguely hallucinated some jelly beans who were trying to tell me that they want a bunch of gifts or something. I can't read it just yet. We'll get to that a little bit later. With it being sunnier though today, I did a little bit of fishing throughout the town, picking up a couple sunfish, but not enough to actually complete the quest. I was getting a lot of bass instead. So I headed up to the mines to round out the day as it started getting later, working my way, just trying to get to the next checkpoint, incrementally make myself forward towards that initial level 40 goal. I was lucky enough to get myself down to level 15, but it was starting to get a little bit late and my energy and health were dangerously low. So I elevated back up, ran my way back over to the farm and dropped off everything that I had collected. And with a combat level up, we were into day eight where I got a letter from a wizard. Yeah, this game isn't as much about farming as it is about magic and all sorts of other stuff. I did still have to farm though, so I took care of all of my crops and then carved a path south, heading down to Cinder Snap Forest, I believe it's called, heading down and having to search around through the forest a little bit before eventually finding the wizard's tower on the far edge of the map. Inside, I got high from whatever the heck was being cooked in that cauldron, I think. It was definitely a little weird. <laughs> But with the power of forest magic, I was kicked back out of the tower and then just kind of returned to work as if everything was completely normal. I filled my pockets with everything that I could forage as well as a parsnip that I knew I would need to turn in and headed back over towards the community center, being able to drop off my first few things for the first foraging bundle and completing that, getting some random seeds as a reward. After that, I went and I checked the crops bundle and realized that I need to grow all the different kinds kinds of crops that are available in this season if I want to complete it, as well as having a bunch of gold star parsnips. So I headed over to Pierre's to pick out everything that I possibly could, completely bankrupting myself in the process. I have three gold in my pocket before heading back over towards the farm and planting as much as I can. I'm also using the random seeds and just hoping that I get a little bit lucky on a couple different things that I'm missing. I only have one of each though, so that is potentially going to be a risk and we're gonna have to play very careful. So I'm trying to make sure that the scarecrows can go down. I know they have about an eight tile radius, but I don't wanna dig up the seeds that I just planted. And I also want this place to look good. So I spent some time just making some initial pathing around and through the first couple crop fields to make my farm look a little bit more, you know, high quality. Day nine, I started the day by watering the crops and it takes 90 energy <laughs> to, to water everything here, which means I am rocking with about half of what I can do during the day, completely spoken for by 8 a.m. There was a quest to head over to the mines to kill a few green slimes for a decent chunk of change. So I picked that up and went a stabbing. Also just trying to work my way down from level 15 to 20 to get that additional just one step closer towards my goal. But we are at the levels where these very buzzy bugs are going through. And I don't know if this sound is as upsetting or annoying to everybody else or if it's just something special about me. But these bugs, this mob in particular, drives me up a wall. While I was avoiding them and kiting the slime through all of their attacks, I'm killing as many as I can, getting on level nine this awesome huge room with a ton of resources in it. So I spent every ounce of energy I could afford mining every little bit. From there, I went from level 10, but I'm jumping through the different elevator levels, just trying to find slimes so that way I can complete this quest. And once I had killed everything, I need to go talk to Lewis, but I am exactly exhausted, tired, hurt, and it's 7 p.m. So that might have to wait until later in the day. Once I entered town though, I did get the Linus cutscene where George is a cranky, cranky old person and I tried to be nice. Granted, none of these options are actually good. That, that hurt to say. But thankfully, Gus is an absolute OG and was more than willing to make sure that Linus didn't have to go dumpster diving anymore. Just please, no one spoil if Gus turns evil in a later cutscene. I really hope he's good. The next morning, it was raining, thank 
goodness, which meant that I'd be able to preserve my energy for other things. I ran over to town and popped into Clint to figure out what it would take to upgrade my pickaxe or axe. 2K is a little pricey right now, especially when I'm trying to save up for that backpack upgrade because inventory space is king. So I ran through town a little bit, going into Lewis's house and turning in the quest, picking up the 480 gold from that. And then it's back to the mines. Since I have my full energy, I can afford to try to push a little bit deeper. So I worked my way down from level 16, dealing with a monster swarm of those very annoying buzzy bugs on level 17, and just continuing to work my way down, making sure that I had forageables with me so that I actually had something to eat to replenish both health and energy. I was lucky enough to make it down to level 20, where I picked up a small short sword, a major upgrade in my combat prowess, and a fishing pond in here, which is kind of interesting. Spent a little bit of time fishing and picked up a ghost fish, which I didn't know at the time was honestly a decent pull. I did try to make the push down to level 25 just to unlock one additional checkpoint, but unfortunately wasn't able to. I did pick up a Dorvan scroll though, so that'll be useful to turn into the museum a bit later. But with it getting late, I ran my way through a very dark back alley in the woods and making my way to bed so I'd be well rested for the next day. The next morning I logged into a fetch quest for an axe Robin had lost hers somewhere. Before taking care of that though, I had to water all the crops since it wasn't raining today and I sold off a bunch of things, including the earth crystals. And believe me, I know, I know I'm going to regret that later, okay? I don't, I don't want I don't want to hear that. But I headed over into town and up towards the community center, turning in that ghost fish as a specialty fish? Like I said, I didn't know it was good at the time. I ran down towards the museum, turning in the scroll and getting some cauliflower seeds as a reward. I mean, that's nice, I guess. Heading into the forest south of my farm, thinking that I could chop a little bit of wood, I did see a few kids playing by a sewer drain with toxic sludge coming out of it. That's probably not healthy, but there were some wild onions which I was able to collect and found Robin's axe. So I carted that back up north towards Robin's home, dropping that off to her and picking up the 250 gold before heading over to the mines, starting from level 25 and then working my way south. I'm trying my best to kill those buzzy bugs before they actually turn into the version that flies around with the very annoying noise. And I'm doing moderately well at that point. I was able to make it to level 30, which had the room that looked like it should have a chest in it, but no actual chest inside. I did feel a little bit scammed there, but it was getting late. So I took the elevator, ran back through the darkness, just holding a torch above my head so I could see where I'm going, making it home right around 1 AM. And now this is feeling a lot more like I'm actually working on YouTube videos. But I leveled up in both combat and foraging, meant I could make bug burgers and life elixir. One of those definitely sounds better than the other. The next day I checked the weather report and was reminded of the egg festival the following day, which is good. I'm looking forward to the first actual festival and event with the community. But thankfully it was raining today. So whatever I wasn't harvesting as many of the crops had actually fully matured and were sold over at Pierre's was fully watered and I didn't have to worry about it. So I headed over towards Clint, having him crack open a few of the loot boxes that I had found down in the mines and getting some mixed results, turning some of that into Gunther, which I did unlock a new reward. Melon seeds will come in handy when it's summertime, but it's not time for that now. Heading up north and into the mines, I continued mining my way down, getting into some of the darker areas where I'm fighting the shadow creatures and I can barely see in the pitch black area here. And these lower levels are dangerous. Things are hitting hard and I can't out heal the damage with the little bit of forageable food that I found so far. So I headed up to some of the upper levels to just really shore up on my copper reserves. The mobs here are easier to kill, not trivial, but easier to kill and being able to collect a little bit more resources feels like a good use of the day. The next morning, I woke up to some cookies being delivered in my mailbox. That's honestly pretty nice. I turned a bunch of things into the bin, crafted up a secondary furnace so I could smelt copper at double the current rate, and then a third because if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. I got a notification that the egg festival had begun, so I headed off into town, did a little bit of socializing, talking with the different NPCs that were around town, before talking with Lewis and starting the egg hunt. Now, I'm just gonna pause for a second. It does seem silly that it's all of the children and then me, as me, just bullying these kids by running around and finding eggs, but we're not gonna think about that too hard. 
So I was searching around town, picking up any eggs that I could find, looting the graveyard and around the trailer home and in the back of Lewis's pickup truck. And at the end of the day, well, I think you know who was gonna win this. I bullied those children. <laughs> oh, I got a hat. But with a new hat, you're not looking at my bald head for every single moment of this video anymore. I did a little bit of quick smelting for the copper before calling it a night. The next day, I watered all of my crops, just trying to make sure that they're in a good spot before heading into town quick, picking up a quest from Elliot to get a parsnip. I headed back towards my farm thinking, okay, I think I have this, and accidentally broke a plant. Now, I'm gonna pause for a second because, <laughs> A, that wasn't a parsnip, and B, the impact of this would be felt greatly for the duration of this entire video. I'm not underselling it when I say that this is the one thing I regret the most of the entire playthrough so far. And those of you who know, know, and everybody else will get to figure it out when we get a little bit later on. Don't worry. I'll explain. But I headed into town and I was actually able to buy one of my parsnips back from Pierre for a little nominal fee, way less than I'm actually making for the quest, so this was kind of worth it. I cracked open any loot boxes that I had over at Clint's place and then ran around trying to find Elliot. I had struck out, so I went to go check the bundles at the community center, not knowing that I can do that from my inventory. Don't, 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 don't at me before chopping some wood down around my house to be able to finalize that bundle. I did eventually find Elliot a little bit later in the day, giving him a parsnip and picking up 100 gold for 30, that's a decent profit, before turning in wood and stone for the construction bundle. But that was basically it for today. I would sit here and sleep the one plant I had broken, haunting my nightmares much further in the playthrough, but day 14, at least in the moment, I thought was a pretty mixed success. It was not. It was not a mixed success. It was an utter failure. Day 15, most of the crops were available for harvest. It was all forageables, basically, but it's definitely things that are useful. I can either eat them to keep me alive or sell them for a quick buck. I did receive my first warning from Evelyn that my spring crops wouldn't grow in summer. You would think the label made that abundantly clear. But I spent the morning fishing, waiting for Clint's store to open, before going in and turning in a few of the copper bars that I had collected and my axe, which would allow me to upgrade that and get a little bit better supplies. That meant no wood chopping for several days, but I'm gonna focus on the mines for a little while as we're kind of at the midpoint of the spring and I just need to get my next round of crops planted. I headed up towards Robin's house seeing a rock slide back there and thinking maybe I need to put a bomb down to blow this up to be able to access some additional area. There is something on the map, but no matter what I tried, nothing opened here. So I headed back to the mines, going down to level 31 in the darkness zone to work my way through, just trying to get down to the next checkpoint while dealing with the bats and the shadow monsters that were very nearly killing me. There's a decent bit of copper here and the occasional chunk of quartz, which is definitely nice, but it must have been a bad luck day because I only got down to level 36. One checkpoint for a full day's work on the mines, not great. I did remember though to bring my rusty sword, which I was able to sold for just a few coins, as well as all of the monster parts and a dagger that I had found in the mines. Between that and turning in all the forageables and getting a fishing upgrade, I made 1700 gold in a single day. Not a bad turnaround. The next morning I picked up a quick quest to get a Joja Cola for stir fry. <laughs> okay, that's strange. So I headed over towards Amazon and they weren't open yet. So I went down into the mines, trying to harvest all of the copper that I can, working my way down to level 40 and the very beginning of the ice area, where I did unlock a slingshot and then proceeded to put that into my pocket and genuinely, literally never use it again. I headed back into town and picked up the Joja Cola for 75, handing that in to Leah and getting 75. So it's really just for the friendship hearts, I guess. But I headed back towards my farm, dropping off all of the ores into the furnaces and calling it a night early. Just being out of energy sucks. The next day, I received a visit from Marnie, who had found a dog just wandering around the town, and you know what I was gonna name him, of course. After taking care of the bestest boy, I did have a notification that my copper axe was ready, so I headed over to Clint to pick that up, and then seeing what else I could potentially upgrade. It didn't feel like a good time to do any of that right now though, so I headed down to see Willie, thinking that I could buy an upgraded fishing pole and some bait, but unfortunately I bought the version that doesn't actually accept bait, so I just did a little bit of general fishing out here at the pier, failing several times, but 
fishing up trash the rest of time. I had collected a little bit though that I was able to take up towards the community center and turn into the crab pot bundle, getting me a few steps closer to a few other things being complete. From there, I headed over to the farm, planting whatever random seeds I still had that were viable for spring and chopping down the tree trunks to be able to pick up some hardwood, which I was able to turn into the construction bundle, completing that one for a charcoal kiln, as well as unlocking the boiler room. I went over and checked that and it's all different ores and minerals that you find from mining and caving. So we will be able to complete this relatively easy with some good luck in the mines. But that was it for today. Time for a quick nap. Day 18, I watered all of the crops, placed down the charcoal kiln, watered the dog and made sure to give them some scratches before crafting up some taps. This would allow me to get different resins or saps or syrups from the trees that grow naturally around my farm. And I'll set up a more formal, like actual organized version of it later, but we're just gonna use the wild trees for now. I dropped off both a copper and iron bar at the community center just to get a little bit of progress there and make sure that they were done before picking up a quest for an earth crystal. And yes, you might see where this is going. But before doing that, I'm gonna need a lot more money, both for the seeds that I'm gonna be able to grow in summer and just generally to start getting my gear upgraded. So it's time for the parsnip gambit. I have just enough time for these to grow before the end of the season. So I went all in. So I bought a ton of parsnip seeds, as much as I could theoretically water in any given day, and then headed over to Clint and turned in my pickaxe to upgrade that to copper. This would allow me to be much more efficient in the mines and to break heavier stones. But we're gonna focus on farming for a little bit now. But I also took the one piece of fertilizer and the ancient seed that I had collected from the mines a few days prior and planted that down. That would be huge for me a little bit later on. The next day I received yet another quest for cauliflower and this this is telling me that I made a horrible mistake by not having one and not having the time to grow one. So I spent some time watering all of my crops and then figured why not go all in. So introducing the parsnip gambit, I have just enough time left in the season for one more crop of parsnips. So I went all in with 60 seeds purchased. And this was gonna go hard. I put down fertilizer so everything would be of a higher quality and spent the entirety of the remainder of this day planting as many parsnips as I could physically manage. And at this point, we're gonna have to eat food just to water this each day. This is an all or nothing bet right here. I hope it goes my favor. The next morning, we put this to the test and I watered everything and it takes two thirds of my energy to make sure that the crops are in good condition. But if I can do this right, it's going to pay off massively. But I headed back into town, picking up a quest for a topaz from Abby. I'm pretty sure she's gonna eat that. And then heading over towards Clint's to pick up my upgraded pickaxe. From there, I had him crack open a few of the loot boxes, getting some items that I would be able to turn into Gunther, but nothing that would immediately allow me to complete quests. I did get a new quest completion and I was able to unlock a monolith and don't know, we're not tying this into the multiverse lore. No, we're not, no. But I headed back over to the mines, dropping down to level 40 and then starting to see what would be down here in the frozen section of the map. I picked up some quartz right off the bat and was able to mine my way around, picking up some amethyst as well, which is definitely nice. But my inventory is extremely full already from the stuff that I picked up from Gunther or just from a few other things. So I had to play this very, very tight as far as what I would actually allow myself to collect. And I made my way all the way down to level 45, having basically nothing in my pockets to show for it, but unlocking another check mark. That's definitely good. I was able to turn in the quartz to the community center, dropping off and emptying my pockets back into the chests at home before going to sleep that night. And day 21, once again, we spent two thirds of our energy watering all of the crops that we had collected before opening the loot boxes from our previous day in the mines, being able to take a few of those supplies and turn them into the geologist's bundle. And I'm short an earth crystal and a fire quartz. And I'm once again regretting selling those earth crystals earlier. So I thought, why why don't I do some of the earlier levels in the mines going basically from 21 to 25 over and over again to pick up a bunch more copper, which I will need for some other upgrades and things that I need to purchase, as well as trying to find myself an earth crystal. 
What I did find instead was a topaz, which would be useful for Abby's quest, as well as a small magnet ring, which would increase my overall reach for items being magnetized to me. Both of those are pretty great. So I headed over towards town and just ran around through a bunch of different buildings and areas trying to find Abby. And I know that Abby lives in the building that Pierre sets up shop in, so I just waited out front for a while. I'm just gonna stand here and hope Abby just walks by and that I didn't miss her and that I can turn this in and get the quest reward. We're just gonna wait and hope for the best. Yes! Here. Yes! It's working! Progress. With that delivered, I spent a little bit of time smelting ores and then leveled up in combat overnight. Day 22, we're approaching the end game of spring, but the parsnips are in and the gambit was about to pay off. Well, actually no, it was just a small portion of them. Don't worry, I will get excited about that again soon. I did reinvest immediately knowing that I would have just enough time for a few more to be grown before we ran out of time. But I ate a few of my forageables and brought a few like trail snack bars and then headed over to the mines, starting on level 45 and then trying to make my way down to get to level 50. The food is coming in very clutch here, both for the energy to be able to actually make the trip, as well as health so I don't die. I popped my way into level 50 right around 9 p.m., picking up the Tundra Boots, which would upgrade my defense pretty significantly. From there, I decided to push my luck, making my way through 51, 2, 3, and 4, because that's how numbers work, where I started having to fight ghosts and they're more time consuming than dangerous as you can time a sword swing to just knock them back but you have to wait for them to meander their way up to you before you can fight them some more. I did hit level 55 right around 1 in the morning so I quickly jumped into the elevator and then ran back along the forest pathway making it into bed just barely before passing out that day. That could have been bad. I did level up in mining though so win-win. The next morning I received a letter from Mayor Lewis reminding me of the flower festival which is kind of the closing event for spring so I definitely want to make sure that I go to that. So I collected the pine tar from the two trees that were ready. I took a bunch of that up to the community center turning in the quality crops and the pine tar to the two bundles that I had found as well as a random item that I had gotten from the frozen levels into the winter foraging bundle. But with that I sold everything I had to Pierre because I didn't want to wait getting over 4,000 in gold. That feels pretty good. I cracked open a few of the frozen loot boxes, getting a bunch more gems that I could turn into Gunther, and then doubling down on the parsnip gambit once again. I chopped down a few of the random trees that I had around town just to get a little bit more wood and sap before going and socializing in the bar for a little bit so that way the people in the community at least recognized me. With the upgrade in farming that evening, that's definitely great, and just a little bit that I had turned in from the bin, but really, I'm just feeling like we're gonna close out spring on a high note. I spent my whole two thirds of my energy watering all of the crops again, getting myself to nearly exhausted by just chopping down trees. Once I received the notification that the festival had begun, I headed south to the entrance that Mayor Lewis really did the absolute bare minimum on that bridge, okay? Before checking in with Pierre on a shop that everything was way too expensive for me. I did buy a tub of flowers though, just for some nice decorations. I spoke with a few of the other citizens in the town, tried to ask to see if anybody would dance with me, and nope, I don't think I'm good friends with anybody enough, so I ended up standing in the corner sadly right next to Clint, because nobody wants to dance with Clint either. Day 25, I'm gonna fast forward through watering all of the crops before heading over towards Clint's and opening a few more loot boxes. But as we're getting towards the tail end of the season, I want to make sure that I have all of the fish that I need to gather for this season. And I did get a chest instead of an actual fish, or at least the fish wasn't anything useful. But I fished through basically the whole area of the town, hitting all of the different hotspots, just trying to collect what I can. I turned in what I could to the community center before returning home and chopping down wood until I was out of energy at four in the afternoon and then going to sleep. Yes, this is once again a YouTuber's lifestyle. I woke up the next morning to the Greenhorn advancement, which means I had made 15K total over my farm's life cycle. And that number was about to go up a little bit more as both the far left and top right hand corner of the parsnips were available for 
harvest, and then everything else required a little bit of watering and would come due before spring would end. After that, I headed over to Robin's doing a little bit of fishing waiting outside before she opened up for the day, and then realized that Robin is not exactly a full service shop. Wait, <laughs> I don't only need to pay for it, but I need to provide the supplies as well? This is a total scam. Realizing that I needed to collect the materials and I don't know how I missed this earlier, I chopped down trees both on and off of my farm to collect everything. That took a decent portion of the day. It was early afternoon when I finally purchased the coop and set that up for construction where it would be built the following day. I opened up another loot box with Clint getting a Dorvish helm, which I turned into Gunther to unlock a painting. Finally, I'm getting rewarded for my work. But I spent the rest of the day heading over towards the farm and just doing some decorations, putting down some different cobblestone walls, some torches, some pathing around everything that I had built so far so that the farm would look a little bit more presentable as we go into the summer months. With a quick nap and a level up in farming, that definitely seemed a little bit more appropriate. The next morning, the rest of the crops were due. Well, all but like four plants, but we're not gonna talk about those. I spent some time harvesting all of the turnips, collected the maple syrup from the trees that were tapped underneath my pond, and then did a bit more chopping just so I could get my resources up a little bit better. There was a letter with 500 gold included in it. Definitely nice if I wasn't already rocking three times that in my pocket. But I took the maple syrup over to the community center and then turned in everything else to Pierre directly. I know I could just do it in the bin, it's the same thing, but I just, I was right here. With that done, I headed south, going down to the beach and seeing a bridge with a question mark over it. I'm getting a quest from a piece of wood, but it needed 300 pieces of wood for that bridge to be fixed. And I thought that is probably a good idea. I've played any game ever. If you fix a bridge, it unlocks a new area. So I spent a lot of time down in the forest, chopping down all of the trees I possibly could, getting and unlocking the bridge, which unlocked this scavenging area, which was full of coral plants that I was able to collect, and an archeology span spot that had a single piece of gold ore. Maybe it was like a coin or something. The next day was the final day of spring, and I picked the final four parsnips for this playthrough of Stardew Valley. With that and a little bit of pine tar in my pocket, I saved that for later and headed off to the mines, just trying to work through some of the earlier levels to pick up primarily on sap, so I could use that for a fertilizer for the summer crops. I just definitely want as much of that as possible because I want to get higher quality yields. I was working through some of the upper levels to both kill slimes and search for earth crystals. Even though it wasn't a super lucky day, I thought maybe I could just roll high. I did complete a monster slayer goal, which told me to go see Gil. We'll check in with him a little bit later, but for right now, I just kept pushing downwards. At one point, getting a little dicey with all of the bugs and abandoning ship, eating some food in the upper levels before heading down into the frozen area to try to just pick up a little bit more iron. That was not looking promising with an infested level, so I headed up and went to go talk to Gil. And Gil had made me a sword out of a bug's head. Now, this thing looks very weird, but it is an upgrade off of my existing sword, so let's go with it. I thought, let's put it to the test, so I ran back to the mines, took the elevator down to level 55, and then bopped a ghost with it, picking up a solar essence, so it's not like it has looting on it, is it? That solar essence did allow me to complete another bundle for the boiler room though, unlocking another small magnet ring and increasing my reach even that much further. But with all of that done, I headed back over to the farm, dropped off all of the forageables, a few of the gemstones, and just anything that I didn't know if it had a purpose other than selling it, took one last look at my farm in the spring, and headed off to move into a whole new season. And with that, it was a new day, and it's the first time that the counter on the left and the counter on the right are gonna be out of sync because day 29 is the first day of summer. I spent a quick little bit of time reorganizing and just cleaning up the paths leading over to the coop, which I will probably move. Its position is a little weird. I picked up a quest to get some copper ore and I thought I could cheese it by just using what I had originally, but no, you actually have to collect all 30. So I thought, nope, it's the first day of summer. I need to get to work. So I headed over to Pierre's and bought a little bit of everything. This time making sure to not repeat the same mistake I had made with the spring crops and having a few of everything, and then primarily going all in on blueberries as my primary money-making crop for this season. 
I ended up filling everything that I had had for spring and then some when it comes to overall space. And I was working late into the night with the extra energy needing for tilling the spaces. I had to actually eat food to be able to water everything. It got very, very close to just not being possible. But after a quick nap, we're in a new season, but the grind is the same. I started by watering all of my crops. We are gonna try to work to sprinklers throughout this season so that we're set up for autumn and later, but I really, really wanna get it done so I can focus on grinding out the mines. First things first was dropping off all of the summer forageables that I had collected literally on the way between my house and the community center. I had all three like that. That unlocked the bank vault, which is a bunch of just pure money donations, which I'm gonna have to do some work to really earn my way up to. I did a quick little bit of fishing, just trying to catch a few of the summer fish before heading over into the mines. And with the new better sword, I'm doing decent. I was able to get my way down to level 60, very low on energy. And I picked up the crystal dagger, which Honestly, my sword is better. But I started heading home, dropping off a few of the fish from the lake into the community center, so that was done before calling it a night. I woke up the next morning being told that there was an earthquake during the night, so I'd have to figure out what that means. And then I received a quest that Lewis lost his underwear, and I am desperately hoping that those two things are unrelated. Thankfully, it was raining, so I didn't need to worry about the crops picking up my very first wild honey, which is definitely nice. I headed over towards Gunther's, dropping off a few of the gemstones that I had collected in the lower levels, and then headed over towards Marnie's ranch to drop off a forageable quest that I had been given. And then I noticed something. Lewis, you sly dog. The chickens were too expensive for me to purchase, so I did spend some time just chopping down all of the trees in and around Marnie's ranch, and also on my farm to unlock just a bit more wood so that I could build up some crab pots. Dropping those into the lake here at my farm, that's another just small passive gain that I could get from there. The next day though, it was not raining, so I had to spend quite a significant time watering all of my crops. And in doing so, you can see that bar go down. By the time I finish everything, I land out at two thirds spent for the day. I might have overcommitted slightly. I grabbed all of the taps from the lower wild trees, planting those on the ones directly up by my entrance, heading up behind Robins and noticing that those rocks that were there previously that I tried to bomb back in spring, they were gone now. And I'm starting to think that might've been the earthquake. So I headed into the building up here and turns out it was a spa. I walked through and went in noticing that it refreshes my energy. This is honestly huge. Now I don't feel like I've completely messed up with my farming choices for this season. Once I was back up to full energy, I spent a little bit of time wandering around the town, just checking in with all of the different villagers, giving some coal to Leah and doing a little bit of fishing down here on the beach, especially on the few archeology span sites. One of the things I found was a lost book and that is not gonna be safe for the library anytime soon. But with a bit more fishing and just trying to get rid of all the scavenging tasks for the season very early, I went back to my farm making a very late preserves jar, which I'll throw something in eventually, I think. The following morning, all of the wheat seeds had fully set up, meaning I was able to harvest all of that, and that's that much less I need to water immediately. But I used that space to plant more hot peppers and more summer seeds. I headed down to Marnie's and picked out my first chicken, which I named Mr. Clucky, because, I don't know, I was feeling like naming him Mr. Clucky. And this is where the hay that I had grown comes in handy, and I now have that here. This chicken's gonna take a few days to mature, but I made sure that that was all set up. And then I went over to Robbins to figure out how I could build a silo, which would allow me to store hay for the long term and have it auto loaded into the bin at the top of the coop. Knowing what I needed resource wise, I headed back home, finding yet another lost book while I was on it, picking up some of the copper, stone and clay, and then going back over to Robbins and deciding where I wanted the silo placed. I put it right behind the coop for now. After that, I headed south into town doing a little bit of fishing off the bridge and picking up a can of soda, which does not seem sanitary. 
Day 34, my first harvest of peppers are in, and this feels good. I was able to collect all of these, get everything watered, and put my first little bit of peppers into the preserves jar, where I can make like a hot pepper jam or something, I think. That's gonna be pretty good. I headed over towards the community center, dropping off a snail in the crab pot, which I was able to get, you know, more crab pots, and throwing a red pepper into the summer crops bundle as well. From there, I headed over to the spa to rejuvenate for a little bit before heading off to the mines. Working my way through levels 25 through 35, just trying to hit earth crystals because now that I have chickens, I really want a mayo machine. And for that, I need an earth crystal. I don't think that's how things actually work. I don't know if John Deere is just sticking an emerald inside of half of their machines, but I'm not a farmer. It's entirely possible that that's the case. I was able to pick one of those up, but knowing that I was gonna be needing some additional copper as well, I spent additional time throughout the night as long as I was committed here, harvesting my way down through all of the late stone levels with as much copper in my pocket as possible. I ran home when I started to run out of energy and hit bed at about one in the morning, which feels like a normal day for me IRL. The next morning I crafted up the mayo machine and planted that firmly in the middle of the coop because I want the chickens to know what they did. After that, it was watering all the crops when I saw a notification that a train was passing through Stardew Valley. Now, I have no idea where that is or what to do with it, so I kind of ignored it for now. If I really messed up here, please let me know in the comments. I headed off to the spa again and then back to the mines, and this was my new loop for right now. I was able to pick up a couple additional earth crystals as the luck for this day was significantly higher so I could make more mayo machines. That, if I want to go industrial with that, feels like a potentially good call. I turned one of them into the boiler room bundle in the community center. Now I only need a fire quartz for that one. And received a quest to do some fishing for a red snapper. Not knowing where that comes from, I just did some fishing in the river a little bit late at night. I picked up a gold star bream. That's probably good, right? Day 36, it was raining, so I didn't need to worry about my crops. I went to go check on my chicken and they had laid their first egg. Time to turn that into mayo. But with the silo complete, I picked up my scythe and started cutting all of the grass that was on my farm, turning this into a ton of hay where I could feed my animals long term. Plus the mayo was done. That's a benefit. I headed south to Marty and went to purchase a second chicken because I don't want my chicken to be lonely. This one's name is Plucky. And then I bought a third called Nugget. I might've been hungry when I made these, okay? But with all of that done and no other chores to worry about for the day, I headed off to the mines going down to the 60s where I could pick up a whole bunch of iron ore. We need to get our farming level up a little bit more, but we're gonna need the resources that we could start building quality sprinklers as soon as that recipe is unlocked for us. And I'm starting to get a decent handle on the combat challenge, at least for this area of the map. It's basically just make sure something is in range and then click. I know that's over oversimplifying greatly, but it does feel pretty good to be able to just spam something off into a corner. But on level 69, I did find a dwarf scroll, nice, going down one more level and getting the master slingshot. So the better version of the thing that I just genuinely don't use at all. What is the purpose of this item? But at that point, it was starting to get a little bit late, so I ran my way back home, calling it a night, and there we go, mining had leveled up. I picked miner as being short on ores feels like a very big momentum killer, and I don't wanna risk that. Day 37, and so many things were ready. The peppers were in, the taps were full, the crab pots were full, the preserved jars were all full, so I picked all of that up and ran my way into town. I dropped off the third Dorvin scroll to the museum and then headed over to open my loot boxes from Clint, getting a bunch more gemstones that I turned around and gave right back to Gunther. From there, I headed up to the community center, checking in on a few different bundles and missing out on a few things, but I did have a gold bar, which I was able to turn in to get a furnace. So that's at least one step in the right direction. From there, I headed south to the beach, and yes, my pathing is horribly inefficient, picking up any of the shells that I had forged and handing one over to Leia, because why not? With a few of the rewards that I had collected from turning things into the museum, I put a new painting up on my wall and a new crystal that I can poke to make fun little sounds come out of it. After that was all done, I headed back into town once again, and I thought, all right, let's start trying to become friends with Marnie so we can go get Lewis's underwear. Then I went home, and you can't shower in Stardew, but I definitely wanted one after having to read that image out of my script. But I had two levels up. First, I was able to unlock 
Tiller, where my crops are worth 10% more, and then also Forester, where I get 25% more wood. Again, just I don't want to run out of supplies on this run at all. The next morning, Demetrius met me out at my front door at 6 in the morning, a little weird, not gonna lie, asking me what I would like to turn the cave on my farm into, one that would either grab fruits or mushrooms. I thought maybe let's go for the mushrooms, as a lot of the fruits are things that I can grow or are the scavengeables, which I'm gonna find in any given season, and I don't know of a good value of them out of their original season. I also got a letter inviting me to the Pelican Town Luau, so I'll have to bring something for that. Potentially one of the peppers that had just come in. Once that was all done harvesting, I made sure to water all of my crops, really wanting to be careful that I collect a few of each, so that way we can complete the bundle for this season. I headed over to Clint's to drop off my pickaxe for that to get upgraded to the next level. And with that all done, I headed south to chop down all of the trees out and around Marnie's ranch again to just get myself a little bit set up on resources while iron bars were smelting in the furnaces next to my house. Day 39, I had a little bit of oak resin which was available for harvest, the iron bars from all the furnaces, which immediately got replaced, and then I watered. I watered as much as I could water until I could water no more with all of my crops fully properly hydrated. That was about the time that the notification of the luau about to begin came in, so I headed down to the beach to go talk with everybody, seeing a couple different things I could purchase, nothing immediately stood out. But the NPCs were all just chilling around. I stopped in to say hi to many of them, there wasn't, didn't look like there was anything else that I could do. I went over to the pot and threw a hot pepper into it. I'm hoping that that's the right thing, and once the cutscene actually started, the governor seemed unimpressed, but happy. It was... It was fine. Everything's everything's just fine. The next morning, though, it's right back to the grind. First, I watered all of the crops. I'm really hoping the melons come in soon that I could run two runs of them through this season. Plus the tomatoes. That would honestly be nice. All of the forageable random seeds had come in, as well as a big majority of the pepper plants that I had set up. And I know I said blueberries would be my main crop, or at least that's what I had intended going into the season, but the peppers are really putting in work. I dropped everything I had off, having one of my tomatoes, which I was able to turn in for a bundle, completing another with the oak resin, getting some Autumn's Bounty food. I don't know, that feels underwhelming. I went over to the spa to rejuvenate my energy before heading back into the mines, and this isn't a mine anymore. This is just straight up a dungeon. This is just straight up a D&D dungeon. I am fighting skeletons. I am now playing Dungeons and Dragons. But I had an insanely good run, blowing through 10 levels of the dungeon, getting all the way down to level 80, where I was able to pick up the Firewalker boots and hit what looks like the next kind of thematic transition on the whole thing. And there's little tiki guys with magic shooting things at me and shadow creatures, which takes me more than a dozen hits to kill. And my health is under half and I haven't even noticed yet. So that food that I had just gotten from the community center came in clutch, restoring me back up to full health and full energy. I was able to mine up a little bit of gold ore, which is definitely gonna come in handy, and actually was lucky enough to make my way down to level 85, already hitting my first checkpoint inside the lava section of the mines. The problem I had was my inventory space was getting in the way of actually being able to collect anything, so I hit the elevator back up, returning back to town, and setting all the iron and gold to smelt in the furnaces before calling it a night. And then we made almost 3,000 gold in a single night. I know I'm going to make more later, hopefully, but for everything I had done so far, this feels like a big win. And it's about to get better because it was raining, so I did need to worry about all of the crops, but the melons were in. I harvested all of those, threw most of them in the chest to hold on to them for right now because you never know if they're going to come up for a quest. But took care of the chickens and then headed over to Clint's place to pick up my copper hoe upgrade. Now I'm even better positioned for fall. I headed back over to Pierre's to both grab some more melon and wheat seeds that I would be able to plant for hopefully a second harvest, and then checked my mushroom cave for the first time. It had mushrooms in it. Shocking, I know. But I headed over to the community center, turning in both the hay and the wheat, and just needing an apple now, and also going and turning in one of the mushrooms for the fall foraging bundle. That cave's already starting to do well. 
I then headed over to the Adventurers Guild, and since I have better equipment, I sold off everything that was from the lower tier. It's the only place I can do this. I really wish you could throw these in the bin if possible. But with it being a rainy day and everything else taken care of, I headed back into the mines. I'm on level 85, and that's a good place to start getting gold. Lots of nodes of gold. Plus, my bug sword is doing okay damage, so killing any of the mobs that I encounter doesn't seem to take an insanely long time. I do have to be careful specifically with the shaman-like enemies, but thankfully I still have some of that food from the community center that can basically instantly fully restore me. And I was lucky enough to make it down to level 90, picking up Obsidian Edge, which is even more powerful than the sword and is a massive upgrade to my overall PvP capabilities. Riding on the high of that, I thought, let's keep pushing, but I got down to level 93 and there were multiple enemies that all shot projectiles and I'm at about a quarter health, so nope, I noped out of there and returned back home. And that's when we unlocked it, level six farming. The next morning, the harvest was in. I checked my recipes and yes, the quality sprinkler is what I wanna to work towards, but the blueberries were in. So I spent some time collecting all of those and then got a request from Pam for a pale ale. Now, I don't know how to make beer. I'm hoping I can figure that out in the future. And while the goal is to automate all of this down the line, I still have to water the crops by hand, at least for right now. The big thing though, is I need refined quartz, which did take me a little bit to try to figure out how to make, but once I did, yeah, okay. It's easy as just cooking quartz that you find. I am a little upset at myself that I've been throwing quartz away though. But I don't wanna break any of the plants that I have on this right side, so even though it wastes a few tiles on the left and right, my first two sprinklers went down on the tomato plants, just so they can be a little bit less that I have to do each day. After that, I went to the beach to just pick up the forgeables, handing one over to Leia, and then going back down into the caves, hitting level 95 as it started getting pretty late in the day. I did have to use my last autumn's bounty to keep myself alive as it was very close to death. But when level 96 was a monster infested floor, I warped back up and checked the elevator, thinking I could go off of the size of the box on a rough idea of how big the dungeon would be. It keeps going. I could have sworn it would be like a hundred is the... Oh no, it's gonna keep going. But I headed back home. It's really nice not having to carry a torch to be able to see where I'm going anymore. Took care of all of the forgeables and all the furnaces and then head to bed. From there, I did get a level five combat upgrade. So I thought to increase my critical strike chance. As I'm continually upgrading my weapons, a 10% buff doesn't feel as strong as being able to just one-shot enemies if I get a little lucky. And that near 6,000 gold that I earned, that feels pretty good. We're getting exponentially more wealthy. And it's just gonna keep going because the next day the crops were in again. I was able to craft up another sprinkler, but there was a spot in the right farm to put that down. So I just threw it here for now, collecting the honey, all of the crab pots and all of the red peppers. From there, I picked up a quick quest from George for a puffer fish through a ruby at Gunther to continue building out the collection and then purchased the backpack upgrade. It might feel like a huge spend, but it's that much more time and more variety that I can collect from the mines, which hopefully would allow me to continue to delve deeper instead of having to pass things by. I then bought some corn seeds as I figured I could plant them in summer and they would grow through all of fall as well. Went down to the beach to check out all of the coral and to do some fishing, just trying to get that puffer fish for George. I wasn't really doing well, so I went in to talk to Willie and I might've made a critical error. I tried to patch things up with Willie by just selling him the fish that I had been catching. I, I really was genuinely trying to say that I'm just bad at the fishing, but Hopefully, hopefully he forgives me. Oh wait, no, that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say that I haven't been catching fish. No, I haven't been catching fish. I've been fishing a lot. Oh no, I made him feel bad. 
I did go home and plant all of the corn, this time with sprinklers in mind, allowing me to just plop some down here once I have the crafting ingredients to make them. The next day, I don't have to worry about that though, and both the tomatoes and some of the peppers were in, so I dropped all of that off into the bins, and with a little bit more time, knowing that I need more quartz specifically to be able to make more sprinklers, I hit the upper levels of the mines, just trying to continue through in the areas where I could one-shot enemies, but I wasn't getting the most luck. So I figured as long as I'm struggling on getting the resources that I want, I might as well be making progress on the overall levels. I had a couple close calls, but I'm coming in a little bit more prepared with more food in my pocket that I can restore health and energy, so that way I can continue pushing and delving deeper. I'm starting to get Omni Geodes from the rocks as well, which I know are extremely valuable. Plus, I did get lucky finding quartz along the way. With enough food in my pocket, I was able to get down to level 98 and had some interesting discoveries. But with a little luck, I was able to make it to level 100 and made some interesting discoveries. What is this? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> You found a star drop. Your mind is filled with thoughts of subscribers. Your maximum energy level has increased. Yo. That's huge. Feeling invigorated from getting a star drop, I headed over towards the community center, paying 25k and getting a somewhat questionable looking cake. But I went home, smelted up the gold, and called it a night, and then learned how to make bombs in my sleep. This game is weird. The following day, it was raining again, and I'm starting to question my actual investment in the sprinklers. Maybe I should have rolled high and put my watering can in for repair and upgrade as well, even though the goal is to fully automate it and genuinely never need that. I had moved both of the sprinklers from the tomatoes over to the corn plants, so I replaced one of them back in the original position, taking care of all of my chickens and turning all of their eggs into mayo. I don't know if they know what's happening in that machine. I really genuinely hope that they don't. I purchased the 5k bundle from the bank vault, getting some quality fertilizer, which I might use for fall, and then got a request for a sweet pea from Harvey. I don't know where to find one. Piers was closed today, so I can't just buy one from him, so I headed over to the loot box store, having Clint crack open all of the geos that I had collected, getting some decent stuff that I was able to turn into Gunther. From there, I went back to the community center because I had gotten a fire quartz and forgotten to turn it in, so I'm doing a little bit of just looping back and forth on this day. But I completed the furnace room and had a little trip to celebrate. <laughs> From there, it was back to Clint's to drop off the remaining geodes and the materials going to Gunther, unlocking a giant blue bear. I headed down to the beach, picking up a few of the sea urchins that I could found, having this sailor here saying that I'm not ready for the ocean or something, I don't know. I'm not sure what they were on about, but I did a little bit of fishing in the rain, getting a couple more fish that I was, you guessed it, able to turn into the community center, visiting there three times in a single day. <laughs> it might not be efficient, but it does make for some good content. But as I called it a night that day, I saw the Junior was doing a little bit of mechanical working outside of Clint's house, and the minecarts were now accessible to me. That'll definitely come in handy for navigating the town, but the first thing I had to do was take care of the harvest here at home. The blueberries, some of the trees, even the ancient fruit were all come in, so I definitely was excited. I saved off that ancient fruit because I know it could be useful, and then shoved all the blueberries directly into Pierre's face. Having AK in my pocket, I felt like I needed to go say sorry to Willy for choosing the wrong dialogue option yesterday, so I purchased the fiberglass rod and some bait that I could upgrade that. I then headed over to Robin's house to get some upgrades for my farm, but she wasn't in. I did catch her just walking along the street and thought maybe I can big brain this, and while the NPC is in range, talk with the shop counter, and it worked. I love being able to cheese video games like this. It was mainly just to know how much wood and stone I need for the barn. I, I know I could have looked it up, but it's funnier to do it in game. So with an idea of what I need to do next, it's time to chop some trees. And I did that for the rest of the day until my energy was out at about 9 p.m. So it was time for a quick nap going into day 47. 
where first things first was to harvest all of the crops that were now available, water everything down, and then head into town. I picked up some radishes from Pierre just to fill that gap so that the fertilizer wouldn't go to waste in the remainder of the summer, and then continued chopping more trees. And I mean, literally the entire day. I chopped trees and then I headed over to the spa to refresh my energy and then I thought, it would be really boring if I just chopped trees for the rest of the day, but I also need stone for the farm, so I went back over to the mines, level 101 and below, to get gold and stone. And I do have to be very careful here, as the mobs are actually somewhat dangerous, and I was lucky enough to get down to 104, and I'm just eating cave carrots, but my health is dangerously low so i'm gonna have to play it very safe and oh wait no i found a ladder immediately once i got down to 105 i forgot that the minecarts were active and i walked back along the path like i've done every other day because don't worry it'll click eventually that i can use that thing but the big thing that night was the farming upgrade meaning i can craft looms for sheep which i can't afford and can't build as well as quality retaining soil so that could come in handy in the future. The next morning it was a lightning storm, but the tomatoes were in, so I harvested those all before any plants would get struck by lightning. I got a quest for a melon, and this is why I held on to them. But I sold everything off at Pierre, went over to Robin to request the barn to be built and made a space for that, and then headed over to the mines. I could turn that melon in later, but I just wanted to take advantage of the good luck of today. I powered through five levels, making sure to pin all enemies up against the wall, doing whatever I can to fight, and picking up the space boots on level 110. And here I am remembering that the minecart actually exists, being able to use that to head my way back home and take care of some general furnacing and cooking before the end of the day. The next day, I was able to turn all the quartz that I had collected into several additional quality sprinklers, which would allow me to set a lot more of the crops to be auto-watered, so I don't have to worry about it, and I can focus on delving in the mines. The peppers were also in, so I collected all of those and watered everything that wasn't fully automated, getting a copper ore quest from Clint and having him open a few of my loot boxes, picking up my first few pieces of iridium ore, which would be a next high-tier upgrade that I could get to eventually. But luck was on my side, as I very quickly found all of the copper nodes that I needed for that, warping down to level 111 and starting to push down a little bit further. I'm picking up all the different gems and gemstones here, but I am a little bit less equipped on food because I'm not sure if that cake is actually edible. I got down to level 116 before my health started hitting a little bit lower and I needed to abort. Heading back up to the surface, it was too late for the Adventurer's Guild to be able to potentially do that. So I headed over to the bar to drop off the quest with Clint so I wouldn't forget about that. Heading back home and leveling up in combat, which is definitely gonna come in handy as I'm going to be doing more fighting. The next day it was raining again, so even though I'm investing in sprinklers, it does seem silly that I'm plopping them down. It's like washing your car before a thunderstorm. The blueberries were in and I did some scything of hay to make sure that that would be there for my chickens, using the minecart to head over to the mines and then walking over to the Adventurer's Guild to sell off all of the armor and weapons that I no longer needed. That wouldn't open until two, so I figured I could at least spend some time making progress. So I went down into the mines powering through 116, 17, 18, 19, and making my way eventually to level 120. Reach the bottom, reach the bottom, this is the bottom, <laughs> I did it. A key has been added to your wallet. Interesting. I didn't even think that that would be the bottom. Yo, okay. Having just casually completed the last five levels while I was waiting for the adventurer skill to open, I went in there and sold off all of the different monster parts and swords and then bought myself some bread to celebrate. I, I just wanted to buy something from Gus because he's a real one. But the rain is providing excellent cover for me as I'm able to use all that time smelting up to be able to set up more sprinklers so that once the rain stops, I don't have to worry about it either. The next morning, the barn is finished, but my inventory is starting to spill out, so I had to do a little bit of an inventory management montage. I'm fighting a bit of a cold, so I can't do the super deep announcer voice. But I headed down to Marnie to purchase some animals and she wasn't there. So I returned back up to my farm, smelting up a few things, then realizing I can make in place a recycler machine, which would allow me to get refined quartz from the CDs that I can get from the crab pots. 
Clint had another quest for some copper ore, and it's getting very late in the summer, so it's not like I can plant new crops. What I have is what I have. So I got to the mines very late that day, spending some time just trying to break all of the different copper that I could find. I thought I had collected enough, so I went to go talk to Clint to turn it in. Instead, he was just talking about the minecart, and I realized I was for short. But when I returned back, the recyclers were already doing work, getting refined quartz from the trash that I had thrown away. This is gonna make getting sprinklers so much easier. So the next day when it was once again raining, I harvested all of the crops that I could, headed off to the mines very quickly for my four copper using the minecart to warp my way over towards Clint to get that quest complete and then getting some copper out of a geode, the irony. I got a piece of Neptunite from one of the magma geodes and turned that into Gunther. I really thought that that would unlock a reward. Maybe it's based off of how many things you've turned in. I then threw a yam into the fall crops bundle, even though it's summer, I don't know how that works, and purchased the 10,000 gold bundle, unlocking a lightning rod. And that felt amazingly on time because it was storming. But with the other resources that I had collected, I was able to craft up a couple additional quality sprinklers, and I placed them horribly inefficiently for right now, but I don't want to kill my plants with only a few days left and potentially one additional harvest. So I will fix that all up come fall. And I will say the next morning, it is nice to walk out and having a lot of the crops already taken care of and knowing that it'll be even better next season. Additional melons were in, so I moved one of the sprinklers to cover that space and George asked for a hot pepper. Well, good for you, George, because I have a whole ton that I cooked just here. I headed down over to Marnie and I was able to finally purchase some cows for my barn considering that thing had been left completely empty for two days. And you can tell when I made these as the whole what's the heaviest thing in Minecraft meme was going around and all of my cows are named surrounding that. I turned in the pepper to George really quickly, brought a melon over to complete the summer crops bundle and then headed over to Robbins to just rearrange a few of the buildings. I wanna do some cosmetic work on the farm as we're wrapping up summer. I picked up some additional corals and turned in a rainbow shell to Leah, and I'm thinking just because she's right here and likes them, we're probably gonna romance Leah for this playthrough. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. But I just did some random tinkering in the mines. I was a little short on iron, so I was mainly trying to cover the frost levels and Obsidian Edge is doing pretty well, and I can stay in later, considering I can just warp back with the minecart to get myself back home into bed. The next day, I received a letter from Demetrius with a rainbow shell, which I immediately sold, then harvesting all of the crops in the rain, transmuting some of my copper into iron, which would allow me to craft even more sprinklers. I then headed over to check on the chickens and my new cow friends dropping hay in both of their farms. I need to remember to do that because if I'm not careful, they might get upset with me. But we're in prep mode. I'm building out a grid of sprinklers to the left of my farm, setting up what will be a largely automated field that I'm only gonna have to worry about for the first couple days of autumn. And I'm gonna hard commit to this, so I set my pickaxe to be upgraded to steel so I can focus on my farm for the next few days. I'm mainly chopping down trees, I'm making mayo machines, additional crab pots, organizing and redistributing everything, making a better furnace placing space, and setting the charcoal kilns to be in a nice horizontal line. It's easier to manage them. I keep misclicking on them when they're vertical. I leveled up massively that evening too, leveling up on kegs for farming, which will come in handy, as well as now being able to craft lightning rods from the foraging upgrade as well. Plus a cool 9,000 in profit. That's nothing to shake a stick at. Day 55, we're coming up on the very end of summer. So like I said, I'm in just clean up and organizing mode. The trees were in, as well as my final harvest of hot peppers for the season, and I'm throwing down some torches just so that the place is decently lit. I bought some additional corn seeds from Pierre, as that would be one of my major fall crops, then doing some late in-season fishing, just trying to catch the last little bit of summer fish that I can. And I was able to complete the ocean fish bundle. With that done, I spent some time tilling, fertilizing, and planting corn throughout a portion of my mega field to the left, continuing to clear back on the different weeds and trees so that none of that would encroach in and ruin my farmland. I worked on that well into the night and then went to sleep on the penultimate day of summer. 
The next morning, I walked outside, being invited by Lewis to the Moonlight Jellies ceremony at the end of the day. From there, I harvested the final crop of tomatoes and that small patch of peppers that I had planted slightly off time, collecting everything from the crab pots and then heading over to Marnie's to purchase some shears and a milk bucket, which will be useful for taking care of the animals later. From there, I bought a few more corn seeds from Pierre, did a bit more trimming and chopping around the farm so I could build some wood fences that I could encapsulate all of the animals into so that way they could just have a space that's theirs to roam in while the fields would be nice and safe. But as it started getting late, I headed over to town so I could hit the Moonlight Jelly Ceremony right at 10 p.m. From there, I walked around to a few different members of the community, just trying to see who was around, checking in and chatting with everybody. And then I spoke with Lewis to send off the lantern and have summer come to a close. Now, at this point, we're at the halfway point of this adventure in Stardew Valley. And honestly, it feels pretty good. It's nice to explore a new game and to do something different. Waking up the next morning, this adventure would continue. I'm in fall, so that means all of the crops that I had on my farm are now dead, with the exception of the corn that I had planted previously in summer. And some of that was actually ready for harvest, so I'm going to start with a little bit extra gold in my pocket. I spent some time clearing out all of the dead plants that could no longer yield anything for me, and preparing my farm by planting down the sprinklers in a much more advantageous grid. From there, I headed over to Pierre's, picking up a few of each type of seed to make sure that I would be able to complete the community center and get a little bit of variety. I can reinvest into one profitable crop at the end. I headed over to Clint's to pick up my steel pickaxe, but I'm not gonna use it at all today. I'm using my hoe and fertilizing all of the ground. I wanna make sure I'm getting high yield, high quality crops. I'm planting primarily cranberries, some eggplants, corn, but pumpkins are a big one. Now, I didn't know about giant crops at the time, so that's why all the sprinklers are in the current grid, but they'll get better and more possible when I move to Iridium at some point in the future. But with an entire day focused on farming, which makes sense given that it's a farming game, that's how we started Autumn, making plans for the future. And I will say, all of the prep work that I've been doing over basically all of summer feels great that I step outside and despite all of the work yesterday, everything is watered and I don't have to worry about that at all. I did a little bit of time just prepping the bait for the different crab pots, doing a little bit of mining in the lowest levels of the mines to pick up a little bit of extra gold and trying to pick up some gemstones as well, just for some easy money. I got back down to the bottom level again, went and hit the minecart and got to a cutscene that I've never seen before. The new special orders board is something that I've never gotten to. I've only ever played up until about halfway through summer. So this is, we're in uncharted territory here and any game knowledge I had is now spent. I headed over to Clint's to pop open a few geodes and then went and checked the board, getting some Pierre's prime produce. So I need 25 gold star vegetables turned in. Considering I needed a little bit more on vegetable side, I picked up some more seeds from Pierre and then went and grabbed all of the fall forageables that I had collected, turning them into the community center to get that done on day one. With that, I smelted up some quartz, planted more eggplants, took care of all of the chickens and took a few extra bars to make a few extra sprinklers and expand further on the fields for the farm. Since I don't have to worry about watering, it's gonna make things very easy. The next day, I'm putting some wooden paths around all of the trees to prevent any additional saplings from being planted automatically, which would stunt the growth of the few of the trees that still haven't fully matured. I'm making sure to check in on all of my animals and I got a request to bring a bundle of amaranth, but I first quickly took a few of the animal products, dropping them off in the community center. I then headed back down to Marnie's and I want no comments about my inefficient pathing, spawning another chicken and another cow since I have the money to do so. I then spent some time collecting wood, turning that into charcoal and smelting up a lot more copper, which I could then use to make a few more taps to plant on a few maple trees down near the bottom of my farm, considering I didn't have any maples in my little sap area on the top. I spent a majority of this evening then, since I didn't have to spend energy on watering, just clearing out the farm, whether that's scything on all of the grass or using my new steel pickaxe, which can break the three by three rocks. The entire bottom corner of the farm is now completely clear, minus a very few items that I cannot yet break. 
But when I went to sleep that night, I heard something interesting. The next morning, I found a random owl statue just sitting in the middle of my field, so I thought, let's move it to a place where it, it at least makes a bit more sense. And after taking care of the animals and moving a few things around on the farm, again, just going for aesthetics here a little bit, I'm back over to the mines to re-up on copper, which I could use to craft more taps and more of my early game upgrades that I'd kind of price myself out of. I found a few earth crystals, which would definitely come in handy, more quartz, which is always good, and spent the entire day there just on a resource gathering. It definitely takes me back to my Minecraft roots, but it's not exactly what I want to be doing every day. I had found another ancient seed though, so I planted that down just so I could double up on collecting those fruits. I'm gonna wanna get as many as I can before winter so I don't have to reset, so that's definitely going to come in handy. Day 61, I planted some wheat to fill out the small space in the farm and then harvested another patch of the corn, taking care of all of the animals, doing a little bit of smelting, and then heading over to Clint's to open quite a few additional loot boxes. From there, I was able to head over to Gunther and turn a few in, collecting the Obsidian Vase reward before heading over to the community center to turn in the five-star corn to complete another bundle. From there, it was over to the mines for just a little bit more resource gathering so I could build out a few more of the machines I need on the farm. And on level 69, I got a random rare music disc drop. Nice. Day 62, the eggplants were in, and it was the first harvest from these plants, which will continue in place, so I don't have to worry about that. I still have to worry about watering the wheat by hand because I don't have another sprinkler for that area. Getting an advancement for my crab pot catching, so that definitely feels good. I feel like I'm doing Willy proud. From there, I did more work around the farm in general, mainly starting to get into building casks. I could take the cranberries that I'm growing and turn those into wine, but that is going to be a very time-consuming process. I headed over to Gunther's to turn in the music disc and then went and saw Willy by handing him a gold bar to put under his pillow. I'm not gonna ask too many questions there, that does not feel comfortable. And since I was halfway done with the vegetable quest, I picked up some amaranth seeds from Pierre's, planting those in the small area down at the bottom of the space. From there, I did a little bit more pathing, just made sure to harvest the mushrooms in the cave that I had completely forgotten about, and ended up with about 3,000 gold from just one of my many crops. And that continued into the next day, where the other half of the eggplants were ready for harvest, and it's going to start feeling like I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. I used these to turn in for the quest instead of selling them, putting me up to 18 out of 25. And then I went and looked around on my couple different villagers to just see what I had. I handed Leah a frozen tear, and she hated it, so I guess that's not exactly a good choice. So I dealt with that rejection by destroying the environment and chopping all the trees down by Marnie's ranch. Actually, when I think about it, that's actually by where Leia lives as well, so that might not be appreciated, but we're gonna, I did it anyway. Day 64 and the cranberries are in. This is gonna be one of the biggest parts of my overall crop sales, so that's going to be massive. Linus sent me a letter requesting me to find his blackberry basket, which would allow him to do a little bit of berry farming. So I was definitely out to help my main man, and I spent some time just running around everywhere in the world trying to find it. I genuinely just struck out on this day. I have no idea what had happened. But I checked in with Robin to see what I would need to do to upgrade my coop so that I could have different animals in there as well, while again, continuing to search for a majority of the day. I headed over to the wizard's tower and gave him some berries and continued searching through the night. I really wanted to help Linus out, my main man. But I also picked up a quest from Robin to collect 1,000 pieces of stone. I had a week to do that, so it felt like a pretty easy win. But after striking out on the fetch quest, maybe not. I did end up making over 8,000 gold from the cranberries alone. So yeah, we're gonna be rolling in money by the end of this season. The next day, I received the letter for the Stardew Valley Town Square. So I'm gonna have to put together a Grange display and I'm gonna keep some of my best items for that. 
I spent some time harvesting the wheat and the corn, expanding on the kegs so that I could dip into cranberry wine on the second harvest, and then headed down into the mines for just a little bit of copper and to start working on that stone quest. Now, I don't need to worry about where I'm getting it, so I'm just trying to mine the stone from the earlier levels where I know I can kill mobs with basically one or two hits, and after an entire day's worth of work, mining every single stone node on almost every level that I could interact with, I was barely a quarter of the way through. This quest might be a little bit harder than I had anticipated. The following day, all of the forageable seeds were now found, as well as a lot of the maple syrups, which allowed me to build out more of the kegs and beehives and other things for the farm. I did spend some more time continuing to search around the map, and I thought, wait, what if I could go in front of the bus? And turns out, you can, and that's where it is. I totally didn't Google that. I promise I did just happen to stumble upon it, but if I didn't find it by this day, I would have Googled it, so believe me or don't, that's okay. <laughs> I headed up to Linus to turn that in and then immediately ran back to the mine. Since a lot of my crops are basically automatic now, I need to really work at this stone quest if we're going to collect it. And I'm 300 pieces in after a day and a half's worth of work. I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to do this. I spent my entire energies bars worth of energy in the mines before having to run back home and immediately go to sleep. I did, however, level up in both mining and combat for my additional time in the mines, and I could craft some new rings. I might get into those soon. Day 67 started out pretty quiet. It was just an eggplant harvest, a few other things from around the farm, before I noticed that I had yet another ancient fruit. I immediately boxed that one up, that feels like a huge win, before taking the minecart over to see Clint to open up all of my loot boxes with him. Since it was a bad luck day, I figured maybe let's not go to the mines, and this was a mistake. Actually, it's why I ended up not completing the quest, but I just spent some time chopping trees around my farm. A little bit too much time, actually, because I ended up getting exhausted, which really made the journey to bed pretty tedious. I think I have done messed up. I have done messed up. <laughs> the next day, thankfully, I wasn't punished for that. Maybe it's because I got about 18 hours worth of sleep. I don't know. But the animals were quite upset with me and I couldn't figure out why. I also didn't go into the farms to check to see if they actually had food. My bad. I spent some time in the day talking with a few of the different villagers that I saw about harvesting all of the forageables down on the beach before going back to the mines to try to unlock all of the stone that I needed for this stone quest. I mainly worked on the iron level so that way I could get that since I was short on that resource for all of my sprinklers and other upgrades. But I'm mining every single stone node on every single level and we're only about six tenths of the way through. We only have three days to do this. It's gonna be very close. Day 60 nice was a massive harvest, collecting all of the amaranth, which we would need for the quests, as well as a couple other small things. Some of the wine was in, the corn was in, the cranberries were in, and I got a cake from my mom. It's just overall massive success. I delivered the flowers down to Marnie and then headed over to the community center to just drop a few things off. Getting my second star for the community center on the board felt like a huge win, so I went and spoke with a lot of the townsfolk to just try to re-up on the social aspect of this game that I have greatly been ignoring, turning in the purple mushroom to Harvey so he could poison somebody, and then throwing down the crystallarium. And I figured, why don't I have it make earth crystals? And some of you might already be in the comments for this, but I was having a really rough time, or at least I remembered having a rough time finding earth crystals. So I thought this would potentially be useful. I then spent the rest of the day sort of manicuring the farm, getting wood and stone from around my base, going to sleep, and then having a fever dream about a bunch of Junimos becoming a pit crew for a bus. Day 70, it was raining, and my investment had already paid off. The first Earth Crystal was available from the Crystallarium. I got 500 gold from the mayor as a bribe for maybe reminding me to collect his underwear, going and harvesting all of the pumpkins from around town, and then talking with Pam, who had noticed that the bus was now available. I went and I dropped off the vegetables to Pierre to complete my Gold Star vegetable quest. 
And then it's all about the stone. I first turned in a pumpkin so that I wouldn't miss out on the fall crops bundle, getting a bee house, which will be useless very soon, and completely ignored the stone by buying a ticket to head over to the Calico Desert. And this is an entirely new region for me, so I'm so excited. I was picking up all of the cacti, harvesting the palm trees, and then got the cutscene for going to meet Sandy, a second store that I could purchase things from. And there's a bunch of seeds here which would potentially be great. I bought a ton of star fruit, misreading what season they actually are able to be grown in, and then headed up to the top corner where I was able to use the skeleton key to unlock the skull caverns. And this was kind of scary. The dragon specifically, I had never fought anything that hit that hard. I did, however, pick up a full iridium bar from one of them, so that feels huge. I only got down to level two before I realized that I had next to no health and no food, so I legged it back to the bus, orbiting back to Stardew Valley before getting a little bit of work on fertilizer and preparing to plant the starfruit before realizing my mistake. Out of season. Oh, they're summer, it's a fall, we're in the fall. I get distracted by the desert. Yes, because deserts only exist in the summer, apparently. Don't, look, it was probably like one in the morning when I was working on that part of the video, but I planted a bunch of pumpkin seeds to not have the space be wasted, thinking let's head back over to the caverns that we can work on that 1000 stone collection quest. I was picking up some diamonds and some iron ore. I was just trying to mine everything I possibly could as we only really had a day or two to do it. And I did get up to 800 out of a thousand, but it was the final day and we ended up falling short as I had to call it a night. Day 71, I started by opening a few loot boxes and turning some of the results into Gunther, getting really nothing of value in return, before heading over to Pierre's and getting a slightly glitch cutscene, but I'm pretty sure I had the gist of it. So after watching Pierre try to take some tips from the pharmaceutical industry, I was inclined to never buy from him again, but right now he's the only place where I could get some bok choy and other seeds, which I'm just gonna use for some general variety crops around the farm. I headed over to Robbins to double check on the amount of wood I would need to upgrade my barn, chopping down all of the random trees both on and off my property to get enough resources to be able to do it. I did get myself nearly exhausted, not making the same mistake as I had done previously, before crafting my very first Iridium Sprinkler. And this feels like we were just a quality sprinklers at the start of summer. To already be upgrading again feels massive. I was able to catch Robin right near the counter, doing the same glitch by speaking to the counter, even though she's behind me, and schedule the upgrade for the big barn, which is a pretty big step. We'll be able to get sheep as well, before heading over to the spa to refresh all of my energy, so that way I could do a little bit of tilling and planting on all of the bok choy and other seeds that I had collected, so none of my farmland would go to waste. And as it started getting towards the evening, I just set aside all of the different crops that I was going to collect and put into my Grange display for the following day, because I'd really like to win this one. The following day was the Stardew Valley Fair, but that didn't start until after I had gotten a mini shipping bin from Pierre as thanks for completing his quest. After taking care of a few chores around the farm, I headed off to compete in the fair. First, the strongman competition, which earned me one star token. I did do that three times before setting up my Grange display with all gold star items minus the honey and the prismatic shard. It feels like this is a lock for an absolute win here, right? I spent 100 gold to get my fortune red and I don't know, the options that I was given feel very weird, but we'll try to make it work. Purchasing as many star tokens as I could afford, that 100 gold actually costing me just a little bit. And then it was time to gamble. Green. Let's bet half our tokens. Oh God. I hate this, I hate this. With my luck utterly dashed, I went to talk to Lewis to start the judging of the Grange displays. And after everything, I placed second. I have one of the rarest items in the game. What the heck placed first? What do you see here that beat me? But with 500 tokens and a dream, 
I really want the star drop that's available from Pierre's. We wheeled and wheeled and wheeled and wheeled and wheeled and was never punished. Getting up to 2,800 token. So I was able to purchase both the rare crow and the star drop, expanding my energy yet again. Plus I got an earth crystal from the crystallarium. So, you know, it was a really good day. Feels like a pretty good day. Yeah, it was a good day. Day 73, it's raining, but I don't have to worry about that anyway because I have sprinklers, but a lot of the crops were in, mainly the corn and the eggplants. I was taking care of the animals in the farms, making sure that they are well fed and cared for, and then just did more chopping around the farm. I want to get as much done as far as wood chopping around so I could then upgrade my ax again to the steel version so I could start doing a little bit better. So I chopped trees and then I spawned and then I chopped trees. I'm putting that expanded energy bar fully to use, spending the entire day collecting wood. I collect wood. This is my purpose. The following day, the cranberries were in, which was another big money day, and we're gonna make a tidy profit off of that. I took care of all of the animals, getting some large milks, which I'm converting into cheese, which I could use for food going over to the Skull Cavern, thinking that that could heal me pretty well. And I feel like this is the time. I turned in my ax to be upgraded to steel, knowing that I'm gonna get that 5K and more back this evening. I picked up a crab killing quest, so I thought, why don't I head over to the desert and see if I can do both at once. I had crafted up a few bombs, so I'm using those to break the rocks to try to find the ladders a little bit quicker. And then I got a hole, which I could just jump into to drop down. And then I got down to level 10, where I was locked in a room with a single fire breathing dinosaur. And in killing it, I unlocked the staircase. Y'all remember when I thought this was just a game about farming? Yeah, me neither. I'm continuing to power my way through here, and having never been in the Skull Caverns before and refusing to look anything up, I remember at the time thinking, wow, that's weird. I've gotten down to level 21 and I haven't hit a single checkpoint. I'm using the different foods and just anything I have to try to make progress, jumping down any of the shafts so that I can get pretty far pretty quickly. And I hit level 35, which did complete the journal entry to allow me to make a little bit of progress, but it did also mean that I would make a fatal mistake. After being resuscitated by Harvey, I had lost 200 gold and a few honestly meaningless items. So that felt like it was a pretty fair trade and a big win. It was also my first death in Stardew Valley, so I'm very glad I didn't try to do this hardcore, because it would not be my last. After getting back into bed to rest and lick my wounds, I was dreaming of a pixie just flying around my farm. I honestly have no idea what they did. Please someone in the comments tell me what this event did. But I made 12,000 gold, my first five figure profit day, and a massive come up, making this, even with the death, a overall awesome one. And it was about to get better because on day 75, I opened up my mailbox to receive 10,000 gold from Mr. Key for making it to level 30. That was, I am very, very rich. So I headed down to Marnie's, giving her an eggplant and then trying to access her room and that wasn't working yet. So instead I thought, let's buy a couple goats. And I had to name them after the goats of, you know, my friends and family. First, Tanisha, shout out to Dominion SMP. And then the next one had to be named after Doc because, well, he's the goat father. Heading into town, Emily required a yam and lucky for her, I had quite a few in my pocket. I'm also turning in a pumpkin quest, so everybody in town is gonna be happy with me. I headed over towards Pierre's, turning in the dinosaur egg, which I got a rare crow for it, but I know after watching this and seeing a bunch of shorts from Stardew Valley that people are gonna be upset about that. Heading up to the Adventurers Guild and selling off a few of the random items that I had found. From there, I spoke to Seb, who asked me about what I was reading recently, turning in a yam to Emily and some coral in to Leia, which meaning I was at two hearts. I'm three quarters of the way through this year. I don't think I'm doing the whole relationship thing right. 
That evening, I was running around getting a pumpkin to Carolyn, so I'm completing all of the fetch quests that I have been given this day, heading back to the farm and noting that both the wine and the preserves were in, but I threw down the rare crow just to make things a little bit more interesting. After that, I headed back to town to do a little bit of night fishing to wrap up the day. The next day was a bad luck day, so I'm just gonna focus on my farm picking up all of the bok choy and then grabbing a few of the saps and tars and everything else that I have found. I moved the beehives down to a lower area so they would be hidden by trees before heading up to Robin to upgrade my coop as well as the farm. So that way I'm at least on tier two of both of those. From there, I headed south to Clint to pick up my steel ax, having Lewis right here and being very tempted to use it. I broke down the large dead log underneath my pond as well as the trees down south that I could now clear up a little bit additional space. Each of those gave me hardwood, so that definitely felt like it was the next major progression step. So I went searching around in the forest beneath my base to try to find more and unfortunately didn't catch any. And I know, and I know, if I had just gone a little bit more left, I would have found it. Don't worry, I will get there eventually. I am not completely blind. The next day, both the eggplant and corn were in, which meant it was going to be another pretty decent sized payday. And I saw Carolyn post a notice for a poisonous mushroom on the help wanted board. She is totally going to kill her husband. And honestly, I respect the hustle. I headed back to my house to pick up the requested item. I mean, who am I to say no to somebody for what they want? And as I was running around the town trying to find Carolyn, I did get a notification that a train was passing through. So I headed up to try to interact with one. I stood on the platform and nothing fell off. It didn't stop. It didn't try to kill me or anything. Not certain what I was supposed to do with that. But I did eventually find Carolyn. I'm an accessory to murder. After that, I went down to talk to Willie, picking up some bait for my fishing rod, crafting a chest that would hold some of the items that I don't really use anymore, and then fishing in the lake in the forest south of my farm and captured basically nothing but trash. That felt like an insane waste of time. The next day, several of the crops were in, but the coop was upgraded, and now I had a built-in incubator so I could grow additional chickens. Is that how you would call that? Growing chickens? I put the mayo machines right next to the incubator for lols. And then went over to talk to Marnie to buy more animals, which she wasn't there. Why does this always seem to happen to me? I headed over to the desert, buying an artifact trove with a bunch of food in hand to go take another run at the skull caverns, using bombs to clear out a majority of the space and getting hounded by dragons pretty badly. Thankfully, I was a little bit more prepared for the amount of sheer damage I would be receiving, picking up some aquamarine, iridium ore, and diamonds from multiple different spots. Unfortunately, I died. Losing a couple Omni Geodes hurt, but it's kind of paying for fast travel back home because I didn't lose anything else and we're gonna get more, but I did purchase some spaghetti from Gus so I'd be a little bit more ready for my next trip into the mines. The following day, both the eggplants and cranberries were in, so it's gonna be another big money-making day, taking care of all of my animals and then heading down to go see Marnie, who once again wasn't there. I headed over to the special orders board, which meant I just needed one ectoplasm from killing ghosts and I've honestly been pretty lucky with that, so we'll try to do that. I cracked open the artifact trove from yesterday, getting a rusty spoon, which I went down to give to Gunther, and was given nothing but a crisp high five in return. After that, I headed over to the mines, mining up a little bit of copper ore so I could craft a few things that I needed for around the house, and really just fishing for a ghost, trying to get the ectoplasm, and one did not spawn. So the next day, I'm smelting up all of the copper, and it's raining, so all of the animals are cooped up inside. But um, shh. But I'm making sure to feed them each day, because that feels like the right thing to do. But oh my goodness, the wine. The wine was in. But with that potential payday in my pockets, I headed down to buy a few ducks to add them to the farm. After that, I headed down to the beach to do a few of the forageables, noticed that Pierre's was closed so I could get nothing valuable, and went to talk to Robin to see what would be my next potential upgrade. The deluxe coupe is looking promising. After that, it was loot box time with Clint actually spending some money buying some copper ore and some coal, just because we're getting to the tail end of summer, and I know this might not be a good financial decision, but I do need to get a little bit more progress on a few other things. 
And I know it's late in the day, but I bought a ticket to head over to Calico Desert because Evelyn required a cactus for a quick little fetch quest. So I went and I grabbed a few of those and then ran back on the bus to turn that in. 500 gold for a 225 gold return. Not the smartest investment, but that fits the theme for the day. After that, I handed a cactus to Leia who loved it and did a little bit of fishing collecting a few earth crystals. I'm starting to think these things aren't as rare as I originally had envisioned. The next day, I collected a lot of corn and all of the wine. I forgot that they don't age in the kegs. You need casks. My bad. Before re-upping all of that with cranberries and then heading off to take care of a few of the animals. I chopped trees from all around town, including those that did not belong to me. You might be seeing a theme here. Even going so far to mine a few over in the desert while taking on a little bit of the skull caverns. I did not make it nearly as far this time, dying on level six. That is three deaths in three trips to this place. It is genuinely cursed. So before it was even 7 p.m. that day, I called it a night. Thankfully, I made a killing on wine. I'm just gonna turn into an alcohol business instead. The next morning, while it was raining, I was invited to the Halloween event the following evening. There was another round of crop harvesting and animal care, and we're gonna start speeding through that a little bit more in the edit, as I was chopping down trees, including those directly in front of Robin's house. I purchased a ruby ring from the Adventurers Guild, which, again, I have more money than time, so maybe, maybe y'all won't hurt me too much in the comments. Before spending the rest of the day just chopping trees. I chop and chop and chop. You always need wood in like any game ever. And I always say, you always chop wood in Minecraft regardless of what level you are. And it turns out it's also true in Stardew Valley. The following morning was the day of the Great Pumpkin Festival. I don't know if that's what it's called, but there's pumpkins on screen right now, so that's what I'm gonna call it. But I did need some resources and nothing would happen in town until 10 p.m. So I headed over to the mines where I have a little bit better chance of, you know, not dying, re-clearing the bottom 10 levels to just kind of make sure that I hadn't forgotten something halfway through this playthrough when it came to combat and trying to test out the ruby ring to see how much it greatly increased my DPS, if anything. I was able to clear all of that, getting quite a bit of stone, which would be useful for the next building upgrade as well, heading back up again, going into the 60s to be able to get a little bit more iron so I could build out a few additional sprinklers. Once the bell tolled for 10 p.m. though, I headed down into town, thinking that maybe I could buy another star drop or get one somehow. There was some eh, moderate stuff at Pierre's and I did a little bit of talking with everybody, but it didn't look like there was a core event here. Instead, there was just a maze along the top of the map and could not figure out for the life of me how I was supposed to get to that chest inside of the area with the little eyes that were also potentially carpet before I eventually at one point just smushed my face up against one of the walls and phased right through. After that and some blind navigation through a back cave, I opened a chest for a golden pumpkin. I have no idea what this thing is for, but it's a nice trophy. And with that, we reached the final day of fall. I harvested whatever I could from the crops, getting another batch of cranberries, which, oh, that is a huge potential win. And considering it was the last day of fall, instead of dropping it in the bin and making Pierre do the work, even though I am starting to hate the man, I went to sell the things in person. Being just about 25,000 gold rich at the end of this day made me feel like I was in a good spot. I headed over to the desert picking up a few more artifact caches before taking on the mines again. Now it was a good luck day this day, so I'm thinking maybe, maybe I can get lucky. First things first, I had a few er very early shaft drops, which put me down to level 10 with basically no damage. It was about 1.20 in the afternoon. From there I was at level 17, then 19, then 26, then 29, then 40, then 49. I was getting very, very lucky. I dropped down to level 52, and I'm starting to see Iridium Ore, which, that's the first time I've had that happen. But even better was this one known where I got Iridium, a Prismatic Shard, and another hole dropping down. I got to level 63, low on health, out of food, and with a inventory that is far too valuable to use. So I used one of the beach totems I had acquired earlier and warped home. After dropping off 
anything that would have some potential value so I would be set up economically for the next season, even knowing I'm not gonna be able to grow much during it. I took one last look at my farm as it existed and then called it a night as we rolled over to winter. And with the dawn of a new season, I'll admit, this is the one that I know the least about in Stardew and seems the weirdest since you can't do any farming during this season. I immediately started by seeing a random shadow monster on the street, so I kill a ton of those in the mines. I hope that that's not about to be some sort of attack storyline. Abigail had requested an amethyst, so I wanted to go on for that, checking to see what I can even buy from Pierre, and picking up a quest from the special order board to collect a lot of trash. From there, I went to Clint to open loot boxes, set my watering can to be upgraded, dropped a few things off with Gunther, and then just kind of explored. I dropped off a whole bunch of things at the community center, went around running for the forgeables so that I could complete the winter forging bundle, saw this dumpster in the back here that I didn't know what was going in it, and I had forgotten I had taken a quest, so so pardon me for just a minute. I went back to home and then just grabbed like a whole bunch of good stuff. And I'm wondering, what if any of this goes back there? I have no idea. So I went and nothing could be dropped off. And I do realize it a little bit later after seeing that I need to put garbage in that. Can you imagine if I put a prismatic shard in that bin? So with no idea what else to do, at least right away, I refilled the crab pots and called it a night. Day 86, I was cleaning up and taking care of the animals, because that's all I really have to do on the farm right now, heading down to Marnie, who wasn't there. Why is she never there? Before going over to Pierre's to give the amethyst to Abigail, to turn in a few quests, and completing the winter foraging bundle, getting some winter seeds. So maybe there actually is something that I can grow. That did complete the foraging room, which feels like a big win, three stars on the board and I followed some footprints that I saw in the snow leading to the same shadow person who gave me a magnifying glass and then booked it. So I headed back to the farm, breaking down a few of the sprinklers and then putting down the seeds, thinking that you wouldn't want to run the sprinklers in winter because it would turn to ice. And I would <laughs> just don't, okay? I've never played winter before. But that evening I saw the Junimos potentially repairing the bridge that is over up by the Adventurers Guild. I'll have to check that out in the morning. And after taking care of animals, there was a new entrance on the minecarts, the quarry, which I was able to go check out. And this looks like it's just a renewable source of stone and a few random ores, potentially affected by a luck day, I'm not sure, but there was a cave here. And I'm thinking this is a new potential mine location. So I'm just fighting my way through the flaming skulls and brown slimes and everything else that's in here. I didn't have any food or anything else like that. I wasn't prepared for some sort of extensive combat challenge. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm dealing with, but I didn't end up getting a golden scythe, which then warped me back towards the entrance of this area. Okay, that was weird, but I'll take it. Tool upgrade. In breaking the stones, I got my first secret note, which now I can get those thanks to the magnifying glass. And this one told me that somebody had lost a necklace around the spa. So I headed up there and thought, let's just go click and forge on everything. Just try to see if it's in the barrels or somewhere else. And no, I struck out. Maybe I'm doing this one wrong. I went home, organized my inventory, took a quick nap, and leveled up in combat. So we're gonna be focusing on getting buff this season, apparently. Day 87 is a good luck day. So I raced to take care of all of the animals, collected the wine, picked up my watering can very quickly, and then warped my way over to the desert. First thing, I found a lost book, so the library is at least gonna go good, but I have a bunch of bombs in my pocket. I'm picking up secret notes from the bombs that I'm using, and I'm just trying to rush the skull caverns to get as low as possible. I'm learning the timing a little bit more when it comes to the dragons and the ghosts. The mummies are also kind of annoying, but manageable, being able to blow them up definitely helps. Using the holes to fall down levels, I did make it to level 10, picking up some sprinklers as a reward. So maybe if you avoid the holes and you hit certain landmarks, you still get items? I'm not 100% certain. But unfortunately, despite it being a good luck day, I still have skill issues. So I did die on level 14, losing about 415 golds worth of stuff. The totem is the only real major loss. So I was just gonna call this one a wash, but I ate some food quickly and just spent the day collecting on the stone and wood that I had found around town. The following day, I realized that plants need water 
even in winter, as I noticed a few of the squares were actually watered. So I moved my Iridium sprinkler and then went to go talk to Marnie to pick up heaters for both of my animal pens. So that way the animals would be happy throughout the winter. I'm also hoping that I have enough, but with it being an Iridium luck day, I don't learn my lesson and I'm right back off to the skull cavern to try to get down as far as possible. Now I know that you could potentially cheese this with staircases or other things along those lines, but I'm just trying to take this nice and carefully. I'm using food whenever I use a hold to drop down so that I'm not too far down on health. And after I got to level 25 and I'm starting to get Iridium Ore, this is the area that I at least want to be in. I was a little bit luckier in the combat side of things, so I'm not dying, but unfortunately, I just, even despite the odd being in my favor, rolled really low, only getting down to about level 40, and it was 1 a.m., so the bus had left, so I used the warp totem that I had in my pocket to return back home. The following day, I got a letter from Clint asking me to give an amethyst to Emily, and I picked up a lot of the things that were just available on farm that I had been ignoring for the past few days. I also realized that I was halfway through the community cleanup requirement that I needed to gather 20 pieces of trash and turn them all in to be able to give them to Clint. So I just spent some time fishing in the pond in my farm knowing that there are no fish there. I did end up getting a secret note talking about a mermaid show. No idea what that's on about. But lucky for Clint, I had an amethyst from my run in the Skull Caverns yesterday that I was able to give to Emily. From there, I dropped off a large goat milk to complete yet another bundle, getting another cheese press in the process, turning in all of the trash I had collected so far, and completing the community cleanup quest. After that, it was over to the quarry area to just harvest a little bit more stone and wood. And I'm just stockpiling at this point, using whatever I can to craft up additional bombs and cherry bombs so that the next time I have a good luck day, I'm prepared. Day 91, Pierre told me about all the different seeds he'd be selling in year two, which we will get to if this video does super well. I also got the fiber seeds recipe from Linus as a secondary bonus for the quest, as well as sashimi for, I'm guessing, the friendship hearts that I had unlocked. I took care of a lot of the animals, grabbing the materials that I would need for my next building upgrade, seeing Linus take a bath in the very freezing cold water, so he is absolutely much tougher than I originally thought. But I went in to request the deluxe barn upgrade from Robin, meaning that I'd be on the highest tier for that building. After that, I was in town where I saw a few archeology span sites picking up some random books, selling some of the forgeables and other things that I had collected to Pierre and going to check the library and with Clint to just see what was going on. I spent a decent bit of time just doing some more manicuring around the base, mainly chopping trees, finding a few items that I figured weren't going to be useful in any sort of recipes, and then just setting them into sell for a cool 6k profit for the day. Day 92, I was just doing some chores around the farm, making sure that all my animals were taken care of, when I forgot about the festival. It was a good luck day, so I was originally set up to go hit the skull caverns, but when I checked the calendar, I was reminded that, oh, the festival of ice. So I headed south from my home to just see what everyone had been up to. And there was a few amazing sculptures that people had made here. I picked up a few of the food items and the rare crow because I am a collection perfectionist and I definitely wanted all of those. Plus I'm pretty sure that we could earn the money back pretty quickly. But then I spoke to Lewis and got ready to take on the ice fishing competition. And I'm not gonna lie, this feels probably the most arbitrary out of all of them because you have to wait for the normal fishing logic whereas all the NPCs are just pulling out fish on some sort of random timetable. And I was not doing well. Uh, really not doing well, let's be honest here. Collecting only three fish in the full minute. And look, it's not like I was gonna beat Willy as his own game. There is no way that that fisherman was not taking away the gold on this one. The next day was bad luck and snowing, so that was gonna be rough. I picked up a few of the forageables that had been inadvertently watered a few days earlier, grabbing a quest for some copper ore, and instead of worrying about risking my life in the skull caverns, just did some of the upper levels of the mines, picking up some copper ore and some random photos that had been dropped and hidden under rocks here. A lot of the secret quests were actually coming in, so despite being bad luck, I was getting pretty good at finding all of them, and one of them mentioned a ton tunnel in front of the bus, which it blew my mind that I could even go into that area when it was time looking for Linus's basket, being able to go even further? What? 
But there's a box on the wall that required a battery pack, and lucky for me, I had one. So I threw that in my pockets, headed over, turned it in, and was asked to bring a rainbow shell to the train platform for Mr. Key. So we got some new quests to take on. The following day, after taking care of all of the animals, I worked over to the desert as it was a good luck day, so I wanted to take on the mines. In addition to bombs, this time I'm also using staircases whenever I'm on a much bigger complicated level that could waste a lot of my time. Getting some energy tonics on level 14, some iron on level 20, another secret note on level 24, making my way down into the iridium levels by about 10 p.m. that evening and really trying to push. There was more than a few times where I had a mob on my face and I'm using the actual level change to escape a whole lot of damage, making it down to level 66 on a level that was populated by dozens of fire-breathing dinosaurs. And while the prehistoric ribs would be nice to collect, I don't think I'd be able to kill everything on here and complete however many hundred or so odd levels are still probably existing in this dungeon. So I warped back home and hit level 10 in mining. That honestly feels like a pretty big win, even if I didn't make it all the way towards my goal. Day 95, I took care of all of the taps and the animals that thankfully still work in winter, so I have something that I can do, and I have a bit of passive income, taking the artifact troves that I had turned in a ton of geodes for, and using those for a bunch of things I could turn into Gunther, including three new things to decorate around the farm. I sent my pickaxe off to be upgraded yet again, and the wine was in as well. But I wanted to get a little bit more hardwood and other supplies, so I headed south from my home, exploring around, and seeing one of these fallen trees here, I, and don't judge me that I never noticed it before now. I gotta say, I'm really thankful for the secret notes reminding me of everything that you all were probably either flaming me in the comments for or yelling at your screens that I was missing. But I collected all of the hardwood from the stumps around here and that looks like it refreshes daily, so that's going to be awesome. But I thought maybe I should follow these a little bit more, seeing another one that I continued along that path just looking around, finding a gold-plated Mirror Lewis statue. I'm pretty sure he's embezzling. There is no way that that is actually what he was able to afford on this mayor's salary. Speaking of salary though, a cool 12,000 gold, mainly from selling wine. <laughs> no complaints. Day 96, I received a quest from the wizard to get a void essence, and I only had about a hundred of them sitting in a chest, so that would not be hard to do. I headed south and turned that in for a cool thousand gold, popping over to Marnie's to pick up a few sheep, and you know I needed to name it Copilot. If somebody can make me a pink sheep mod for Stardew, that would be wonderful. But with how things were looking for the day, I just finally turned into Prismatic Shards since I have like four in my inventory, doing a little bit of scavenging around the area to pick up some different shells and corals just so I'd potentially find what I need for the community center. I sold a ton of that off, headed over to the farms to get my hardwood, seeing an owl fly across the screen and somebody told me that that was probably important. Leveling up and forging over the night going into day 97. Day 97, the pickaxe was in, so after taking care of a few things around town, I grabbed that from Clint and immediately put it to work in the quarry. It looks like it's about one swing faster on normal rocks. But I thought, what if it breaks this thing here in the mines? And turns out it does, and there is... I honestly don't know what this is or who this is, but they don't seem very happy of me trying to give them iron or other things. Does... is, is that actual language that I can translate, or is that just random gibberish? But my confusion aside, the day was actually pretty quiet, just doing random chores around town to get up supplies and resources for future progression that we want to do before the end of the year. Day 98, the spirits were neutral, so I'm going to continue in my focusing on the farm at home because I think there's a way I can share the save file that you all can play on YouTube farms, and I'm gonna really try to do that for my patrons. I built a shed to move all the barrels into, heading over into the mines and just doing around the level 60s so I can collect stone, gold, and a few other secret notes, including one saying that something was hidden behind the community center. So I went to go get that clicking around wildly, picking up a stone Junimo statue. And there's a whole bunch of other things just hidden around here. I tried giving a ghost fish to Leah, who genuinely hated it, before heading to the beach to do a bit more scavenging into the night. 
day 99. I did a little bit of organizing in my inventory to just see what I had, grabbing any random things that I could from my chests to sell off because the night market was in. I sold everything I could to Pierre just to have the funds to be able to potentially purchase things, cracking open a few geodes to get random gemstones, and then requesting that Clint would upgrade my hoe to steel for the upcoming spring. With that all done, I tried giving a snow yam to the dwarf over here, but I don't know if that worked, I don't understand them, before going and mining a lot on the lower levels until it would get a little bit later in the evening. I was mainly trying to kill the red slimes for the quest, getting all of them relatively quickly and heading over to talk to Lewis for an easy 750 gold, giving a ruby to Leah, and again, being rejected. I have no idea what she actually likes. Heading down into the night market, which is one of the final events of the year. Here, I could grab a little bit of coffee, some art, which feels like a massive scam, and a pufferfish, which is gonna come in handy for the community center completion. After that, I, I debate on even showing this because I'm not sure, this is just weird. It reminds me of the great fairies in Legend of Zelda that is borderline demonetizable, but okay. Oh yeah, it does, okay. <laughs> After the show was over, I remembered the secret note that mentioned something about a mermaid show, so I bopped around on the shells in front, getting a pearl. I can't complain. After that, I did a little bit of deep sea fishing, picking up some sea cucumbers and spook fish, but none of those were community center requirements, so I spoke to the little weird cloaked figure in front of Willie's shop, being warped back home for the evening. Resigning myself to complete the year instead of focusing on just that one specific number for SEO, let's do some work around the farm. First things first was cleaning up a few of the beehives and other things, placing them in a little bit more advantageous positioning. After that, I was spending some time with all of the animals, chopping down wood and stone for other things that I could use to actually decorate around the farm. I broke down a lot of the fences since the animals won't leave the barns at all anyway right now, heading over to the community center to turn in the puffer fish and then doing a little bit of scavenging and heading back to the night market the following evening. They were selling a cherry sapling for half the price of Pierre, which I'm not surprised that man is a crook. And in talking to Lewis, I completed the red slime killing quest. I did a little bit of fishing right here on the pier, picking up a squid, which that does seem weird that they're just chilling right here. Heading over to the board and seeing two quests, one of which I could actually do by collecting eggs for Gus. Day 101, we're doing some more decorating around the farm. We're approaching the end of the year, so I wanna make sure that this place looks good and we have some really good progression, plus I'm doing it for the thumbnail, let's be honest here for a minute. I went over to pick up the steel hoe from Clint, dropped a few things off with Gunther, picking up yet another rare crow, and then dropped the squid off for Willy, who had given me a fetch quest earlier that same day. Really convenient that I picked it up yesterday. There's also an iron bar for Clint, so I'm just doing favors for everybody around the neighborhood here. Doing a little bit of archeology, span digging with the hoe, finding another lost book for the library, and dropping off a few things for the artisan bundle. From there, I dropped a few eggs off in the fridge in Gus's bar, heading home to see that the wine had matured, which is amazing. I broke all the casks, heading over towards the shed to start placing those down to kind of compact the whole winemaking industry that I was about to set up. The following day, Emily came to say hello, asking and saying that the farm had been going pretty well. She also told me that I could basically transmog my gear or customize my appearance, so that's kinda cool. I can now head over to her to get a different outfit if I wanted to. I also received a letter about the basically secret Santa gift exchange for the farm, and I was told that my friend was Pierre. Of course it would be Pierre. I spent some time just harvesting and foraging around the farm, breaking down hardwood, while well, I'm just trying to figure out what I could give to Pierre that would be of the least value, but still possibly potentially positive. I tried to catch Marty that I could grab a few more animals for the farm, but unfortunately she was not having it, taking care of everything, and then refilling all of the barrels in the new shop, making sure to put one out front so I would know when they were all done. After that, a bit more chopping of wood around the farm, 
that could be turned into yet more barrels. I'm really going all in on booze here. Day 103, I went into the barn to take care of my animals when I noticed that not all the hay was actually out that needed to be out, which tells me that I am out of it. So I purchased a whole bunch of hay from Marnie and then thought, why not make the problem worse and buy a pig? And of course, I needed to name them after the goat. With everything set up for the animals, it was a good luck day, so I headed over to the farm, already burning a quarter of the overall time, so we're hoping we're gonna do good this time around. And I was doing okay. I made my way all the way down to level 38, primarily depending on bombs, getting a seed maker from the reward chest on that level. And that would come in handy given that I had a whole bunch of ancient fruit sitting in a chest. But my pockets were very full, and I mean very full. So I'm actually having to leave certain things behind because even a full backpack with the variety of things that I'm collecting is not working out. When I got down to level 49, I actually picked up a few iridium sprinklers from a chest. That feels massive considering the amount of ore that that would take to purchase, but I lucked out even further getting on level 54 and picking up a pomegranate sapling. So even if I didn't get to the end of this one, it did feel like I massively succeeded with everything that I had collected, including a few secret notes on one of the final levels. But at 1.50 a.m., I realized I was cutting it a little close. I warped back home and then passed out just two steps from my bed. The following day was yet another good luck day. So I dropped everything off in the chest that I could, took care of the animals as quickly as possible, and warped to the desert using a totem instead of waiting for the bus. This would give me even just a few more minutes in the mines, which could theoretically spell the difference of reaching the bottom, even though I have no idea how far down that actually is. The problem I had here is that I hadn't refreshed all of my gear from the expedition the previous day. So I'm actually having to craft bombs as I'm making progress, which means I need to spend time mining ores in order to continue to make progress further down. And I got all the way down to level 63 this time around, but it was a massive spiral room. It was one in the morning. I was at half health and half my cheese gone. So I took the ladder, then the bus, and then a quick walk home to bed. I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to complete this challenge before this 100 days is over. Maybe that's something for the next video. Following day, I received a letter from Robin asking for 10 pieces of hardwood, and since I have access to that forest where I can get infinite hardwood, that honestly isn't too bad. I took a lot of the eggs that I had collected over towards Gus's, and I found out that I'm only about four short on this thing, so that'll be done in a day or two, opening up a bunch of my artifact troves at Clint's, and then dropping a lot of that back over at Gunther's. I'd gotten a golden pumpkin, which is gonna be my reward for Pierre because I think that's a gift that almost anybody would like. It would especially work for the narcissistic farm seller that Pierre is. But with everything else done as far as quests and chores for the day, I headed over to the mines here, mainly mining on the upper levels to pick up all the copper I would need to re-up on bombs in case I would ever do one final crack at the dungeon. Day 106, I've fallen into a pretty good routine as far as the very beginning of my day each day on the farms. And then I spent some time over on the beach just doing some forging, picking up some books, clay, and a few other things. I went over to Gus's as soon as it opened, dropping off all of the eggs to fully complete that special order quest before heading up to Robin to just go see what I would need for a few other buildings. The stable's looking promising, but I need a heck of a lot of hardwood to make that work. Over in the quarry, I received another secret note with a weird letter just pointing at a bush, so I'm gonna have to go do something about that, potentially tonight. Following another one of the secret notes to a door of the truck by Amazon, where somebody was asking for a rabbit foot that would make my day. There was yet another one that mentioned a treasure that was buried up at the top near the train track, so I picked that up. Heading down to the bush and interacting with it at exactly the right time, having my eyes absolutely scarred. Day 107, Gus sent me a fridge, which I can use to store a lot of food in, which is awesome, except I don't have a kitchen, so, <laughs> so this is basically pointless right now. But after a quick check-in with my animal friends and checking over with Robin, who was out today, I went over to the mines, mainly mining up stone that I could use to get a few additional buildings constructed before the end of the year. 
I completed the quest for killing enough skeletons, though. So I headed over to the Adventures Guild picking up the skeleton mask, which, honestly, maybe I should have gotten by Halloween. Heading over to the saloon that evening and seeing a massive omelet just being splayed out on the table. It was also Leia's birthday, so I gave her an ancient fruit. Some people might be mad at that, but I don't know. I think we're gonna end up romancing Leia in 200 days if we do it. But late in the evening, I had crafted up all of the bombs and bars that I could, running out of coal in the process. Day 108 was an Iridium luck day. This is the best it's gonna get. This is my last chance. So I warped straight to the desert immediately. My inventory was basically stacked for combat as it is, so I'm losing no time. I'm bombing whatever I can, fighting through some of the larger rooms, collecting some rain totems on level 30, but I already have sprinklers, so I don't know how good that is. But I pushed deeper into the mines than I ever had before, getting down into the 60s, and then the 70s, and then on level 76 at 1.30 in the morning, I figured it was too close to call, so I used a farm totem and warped my way back home. Day 109, and today is the holiday festival. While waiting for it to open, the wine was in, so I collected all of that, which would be a massive payday. Heading into town and speaking with all of the different residents of the city. I purchased myself a little tree of the winter star to be in the festive spirits, and spoke with a few of my friends and neighbors who I had mainly ignored for a good portion of this year. I handed the golden pumpkin over to Pierre before getting my reward from Harvey, and it was a single Nautilus shell of which I had collected five on the beach just a few days prior. Man, for being the only person that uses his clinic, he really doesn't like me. I immediately sold that the bid back to Pierre before calling it a night with a cool 12,000 in profit, over half of that being from the wine. I'm basically in the liquor business at this point. The following day, we're starting to wrap things up, and after a few of my artisan goods being collected, I dropped some copper bars over to Harvey for a quick quest completion, picking up some energy drinks from him, which might come in handy in the dungeons. From there, I went to speak to Robin to reorganize the farm a little bit, moving some things around, just trying to get them placed a little bit better, and with the hardwood on board, I even placed down my stables, meaning I'd finally get a horse, just in time for this video to end finding a very creepy doll buried in the ground directly outside of her house. I am concerned. I am very concerned. I took a rabbit's foot that I had gotten from one of the artifact caches, turning it in and getting a special charm, which increases my luck by one level every day. So I'm just inherently a little bit better off, which is definitely good. Once I was back home, since the bin was now moved to a better position, I was able to set up a small little smeltery section off to the right of my base, and a space where I could put down lightning rods where I wasn't afraid of potentially getting struck. Day 111. Robin was hard at work, but I also wanted to potentially set out a roadmap for 200 days, so I had work I needed to do as well. I'm placing down the scarecrows and the sprinklers in what could be a pretty perfect ideal location, throwing down some cosmetic items like that giant bear statue that I had been given, and pathing around everywhere so that this place would look ship shape. When it got later in the day, I headed into town giving some forageable fruit into Leia, speaking with a few other villagers, and returning home as I prepared for the final day of my Stardew journey. And on day 112, the final day of my first full year in Stardew, I named my horse Shelby, because of course I did, and took her for a ride amongst the farms. Unfortunately, a lot of my animals were out of food as I was once again out of hay in the worst possible time, but that's a future me problem. This is my victory lap, even if they're upset. I mined some resources at the quarry, headed over to Clint's to crack open some artifact tomes, dropping off a few things at Gunther, before heading up to a bush behind the playground at 12 p.m. sharp for a giant Junimo plush as been told by a secret note. I finished the day by chopping trees, clearing out to the final corner of my overall living space, turning my ancient fruit into seeds that I could plant throughout the majority of next year. And as the sun started to set, and the last day was over, I reflected on everything I had done. This has been a very, very fun adventure, doing something just a little bit different. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all had a good time, and who knows? Maybe we'll do this again, or keep going from here.
But for now, good night.